just came to confess yeah. that I'm just feeling so blessed. blessed. Yeah. I'm just feeling so blessed. So blessed. So blessed. I'm just feeling so blessed. So blessed. Wake up every day. Hi Josh. <laughs> Pop it in, I'm going on in, talking about me when she with her friends. Say when she with me, she loving that shit. When she with me, can't get enough of it. Pop it in, I'm going on in, talking about me when she with her friends. Say when she with me, she all right guys welcome back to another live episode of poetic charm and we have the illustrious destiny brown in the building how are you doing i'm doing great good night good night how are you doing josh oh i'm doing good i'm excited because one of the things i one of the items i ordered from your website did come so that was a yes. gift <laughs> so, so, did, so thank you for keeping that secret as well so she is <laughs> up there so we're gonna also gonna put the link in the description. It's an awesome pel uh, pillow. That's his okay. with the with the afro. So I love that. That was pretty cool. Thank you, thank you. And I'm excited. As for Zens, um, my pre-orders are starting um, on Tuesday after my birthday. So I start shipping. <laughs> there we go. And speaking of, I I, I can't help but do it. But here we go. <laughs> you got it. Yes, I feel so refreshed. I know, right? When did you get it? Mm, it was when I first met Chris. He recommended it to me and I've never felt better, sis. Same, I felt less anxious and I haven't used my alarm clock in weeks. I don't think I could live without it. This thing is revolutionary. Yeah, I absolutely love that song. So could, just uh, you. can you give a brief description about the product and what type of effects that they have? Well, so far the reviews have been more than I had expected to be honest. Um, so far we have three main moods, quote unquote moods. So we have the purify, the relax and the energize. Um, I've had some people who were telling me they had issues sleeping and stuff and the relax has really helped them. Um, I have a couple of friends too, who has energized while they're doing their workout and stuff like that. So the reviews have been really phenomenal for me. I'm really excited. Um, once it's really out there and I can get all the orders out. So that's awesome to hear. I yeah. myself uh, got the eye energized, so I'm looking excited to that and reviewing <laughs> that. So very, very curious to see how it is. And we also have someone else who had their birthday recently. I can't help it again. The birthday boy, Mamba Mike in the building. How you doing, sir? What's up? What's Happy up, birthday, Mike? Mike. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate when it. When was your birthday? Yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. awesome. Mine is on Monday. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like your birthday shout out and whatnot. So, as, as you can see, I got the balloons right there. So. Awesome. So, I like it. I'm the Ship me a piece of cake, yeah? Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't be holding out, Mike. I know where you live at, bro. <laughs> you do. That's true. All right, guys. At, man? Our first topic, we're going to talk about the, let's say, the uh, the perpetual debate among millennials, the difference between talking and dating. And our first clip is from the lovely lady who runs the council page, who's incredibly talented. And let's hear her sincere, authentic Thought. Let's debate about this for a second because I'm genuinely confused on this topic. At what point does society start calling dating talking? What the fuck is that? That's some seventh grade middle school type shit. I'm a 23 year old woman. Do not come at me and say, 
Oh yeah, we're talking. No, you're fucking dating. What is talking? Getting to know one another. What is dating? Going on dates, getting to know one another. You're still doing that when you're talking. And don't say, oh, some people can be fucking. Okay, then they would just be fucking. They would just be friends with benefits. You wouldn't say, oh yeah, that's the person I'm talking to. You would say, that's the person I'm fucking. Okay? Talking holds value, I guess. But it should be called dating. It's dating. Some boy asked me, oh, do you want to go out to dinner and a movie? And I said, you know what? I'm not really interested in dating anyone right now. He said, whoa. Who said it? I'm not trying to date you? Motherfucker, what is dinner and a movie? It's a fucking date. That was your intention. It's called a fucking date. Hence, dating someone. Am I wrong? Am I fucking wrong? Uh, yes, she's wrong, but we'll get into it later. We also have <laughs> Little Mermaid in the building. What up? Hello. Hi, everybody. Hey there, okay. gorgeous. What's up? Oh, yes. Happy birthday, Big Mike. Happy belated. What up, KG? Hey, well, Thanks, KG. KG. Appreciate it. Comments. <laughs> hey, Destiny. Long time no see, sis. I know, right, sweetie. How are you? <laughs> Good. How you doing? I'm great, girl. I'm great. I'm great. I'm, great. I'm blessed. Wonderful, so absolutely love it. And just want to send our well wishes to KG as well. Speedy recovery, sir. Oh, mm -hmm. Speedy recovery, KG. I didn't know you were out. Yes. So, what does everyone think about dating versus talking? What does it mean to them? Uh, each person is it synonymous. Is it? Is there a difference? What do we think about this terminology? Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> I gym. saw that one from the left side, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, in my opinion, <clears throat> at this age, I don't necessarily, I don't really know what talking is, right? Like, talking is something that I did when I was in my 20s um, and late, late teens, right? Like, I wouldn't consider myself talking to, talking to anybody right now. It would be dating, right? Like, dating with a purpose. If I'm, if we're just talking, then you're just my friend, right? I have friends that I talk to, but this talking thing, it's like a younger mentality, in my opinion. I, it's not something I would say that I'm doing with someone. That's very interesting because Mariah and I happen to agree with her. I feel like they're two different stages. So talking is when you just start talking to someone, dating is the next step. And I'm sure after that could be things like exclusivity, an actual title, then engagement. So to me, they're all stages on the, uh, let's say the path of courtship. Big Mike, what do you think? Um, I think you have to talk before you date, right? So I think they're kind of, kind of agree with Josh in, in that particular. I think, I think we get caught up and obsessed with, you know, um, titles, first of all. Um, so I, but, but I think that's, that's a problem, but I think, um, also it depends on like where you met at. So if it's online versus in person, most of the time you're going to still communicate through like phone calls and texts for a while. If you miss one online before you go on that first date. So what would you call that? You know, I guess, would you, like, would you tell someone I'm dating this guy before you actually went on a date with them, I guess. So that, that's the part I'm kind of confused about. And, but for her, Back to Ari Ariella's point, I do feel like uh, that girl may be a little bit uh, immature because she even said to me, she said, this boy that asked me out. And that part right there told me that she was in a younger uh, mindset and whatnot. Because, you know, when you start calling you the guys pursuing you men, you know, before you, uh, you know, act like you're more mature. Right. right. Maybe that's the reason she's attracting boys. I'm glad you caught that, Miguel. Destiny, what do you think? Um, so I watched that full video. She said she was like, what, 22, 23? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking at it and I mean, I see all of your points because I've heard it in all of those ways. So, you know, I've heard someone say, okay, I'm talking to somebody. I'm interested in somebody. We're not dating. You know, um, I've also heard uh, people use them uh, as, as synonyms to each other saying, you know, I'm talking, which really means that they're dating, seeing somebody. Um, I've also heard it in the way that Josh said, where it's just like the beginning, you know, I just met this guy around the corner and we'd be texting kind of thing. Um, for me personally, I, I feel like um, I wouldn't personally use the word talking 
if I was talking about, you know, overall my, my situation with somebody, I wouldn't say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm talking to this guy down the corner. Um, I don't see myself saying that, me personally. Uh, but I do see where she's coming from. But again, I feel like she's, what, 21 or 22? I forget how old she said she was. <laughs> 23. 23 or something like this. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like this is what she was expecting or she feels like she was saying before or something. So I, I kind of got that kind of vibe from her. But overall, I feel like it can be used. However, I mean, I don't think there's a title like... Uh, one means one more than the next one kind of thing. It really depends on the person. What if the person is used to saying talking is their way of saying dating? I mean, I'm used to listening to people use different words from all over the world. And I, I don't get caught up in these, um, you know, titles for things. Because, you know, as a person who speaks four different languages, it's hard to kind of, I don't, I don't see the reason behind, you know, putting this kind of title on, on stuff. So, I mean, I'm different when it comes to this. See, si, comprendo. And as she is saying, it's possible people use talking instead of dating to alleviate pressure that comes along right. with the verbiage used, right? Because as you guys said, if someone says, oh, you guys are dating, and then let's be honest, if you if you guys aren't at that stage yet, you're going to be like, whoa, 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 we're not even dating yet. So I, to me, I do see a, a clear difference, but I understand what everyone is saying in terms of they could be synonymous depending on the person, but they also could kind of be uh, an immature way of looking at things. But again, I feel like with our generation, we're a little non-committal. So this is where you have mm. terms like this arise. Agreed. Um, so and just too. to add, if I'm just talking to you, right? Like I'll use the term, I'm just getting to know this person. Right. I'm not necessarily telling a bunch of people like, hey, I met this guy yesterday and I'm getting to know him now. You are known to, I guess, my inner circle when we like the title dating, I guess if you want to call it a title, dating comes into play. Otherwise, if we're just talking, I'm just getting to know you, right? I'm we're having conversations, which is what we'll do during our dating stage, but I'm just getting to know you. I met this person and I'm just getting to know them. Yeah. That's fair. No, that's definitely a good way to put it, you know, getting to know them. Absolutely. I, I agree with, 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 it's Chiquita, right? I don't want to say that wrong. Um, yeah, because I think like it's the pressure that we're all feeling or everybody feels, right? You know, when you say, oh, date, and you're like, okay, yeah, this is like serious now, right? We don't want to be right. so serious. So everybody tries to downplay it. Right. Say, oh, we're just talking. No big deal. Right. Right. Yeah, that, that's the key word, downplay. You try to downplay what's happening at that time to everyone around you, inner circle or, or other people. Let, or even if it's, a, if it's another uh, guy or girl in play, it's mm -hmm. easy to say, yo, me and that guy just talk. Like, we're not actually dating yet and stuff like that. It's kind of a way to, you know, <laughs> put lesser of the pressure on you or make it seem like you're not really into the guy's but Absolutely. I completely agree. And let's be completely transparent here. Sometimes both parties can agree that we're just talking or we're right. just, you know, we're just bang buddies, whatever. And then something else can happen and it might change the parameters of the, let's say the uh, relationship. No. The next time we fuck, I'm fucking you and I'm telling you that I love you. The next time we fuck, I'm kissing you while we fucking. The next time we fuck, I want you to play with this pussy while I'm Wait, 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 what? <laughs> exactly. Because when you when you lay down Thor's hammer or the female equivalent for the dudes, and then you you're not expecting it could be that great, then things can change. You might be looking at it as just talking or just banging, but then all of a sudden, in your mind, after you get those uh, endorphins, it can be dating, and that's how often how things get misconstrued. Mm, I think people get confused sometimes. They, you know, they. Had get the sex and then they think they're in love. I don't think it just goes to dating from after having sex. Well, okay. they, they, might, they, they might think it's dating, but both parties have to agree it's dating. That's a problem. What? Mm -hmm. So they can, so they can walk away thinking, "Yeah, we're dating now." But the other guy yeah. or girl is like, "Nah, we ain't that." <laughs> but there was something I got from the conversation, right? When she was when she was sharing what happened when the guy invited her out. And she said yeah. he invited for a dinner and a movie and she exactly like went to dating. 
Um, for me personally, that would not have been my first conclusion because I haven't even gone out with him yet. How do I even know we want a date? Like, this is how I would think. You understand? Like, you, you never even go out with somebody. Or how do you know that this is really a potential date? Like, dating is a, con is a, con is a continuum, right? You're, you're doing it over and over again. So, I mean, the first time I go out with somebody is not really dating, we're just going out today. And then I see if I wanna go out with you again tomorrow. So um, when she said it, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, maybe y'all just met and he invited you out. Why do you think it's like, we're gonna be dating after this? So I have a question. So would you consider that a date then? Or would you just say, I'm gonna hang out with this guy? I, I wouldn't really consider it a date. If he said if he said it's a date, it's a date. If he didn't say it's a date, then we just going to dinner and a movie. And then at the dinner and the movie, I'm going to make a decision as to whether or not I want to go out with him again, which may or may not be another day. It really depends on what happens at the dinner and the movie. I feel like people can categorize, okay, if somebody invited you out to something, okay, let's go out. All right, I want to take you on a date. That's a different thing. You want to go out to a movie i feel like this is also a different thing right um if yes he may be interested in her but my thing is i'm thinking from my perspective okay not from her perspective if somebody invited me out i just met you i just saw you okay maybe physically i'm, I'm attracted to you i don't really know anything about you yet we haven't even really had maybe conversations and, and whatnot so this first invitation is my opportunity to converse and, and whatever. I don't know if we're gonna be dating. I haven't really made that decision yet. I'm just going out to have dinner with you. That's how I see it. This That's is just fair. my opinion. <laughs> I guess it depends on what happens before the date or the meetup, right? right. So right. personally, I'm probably not going out to dinner and a movie with somebody that I haven't had conversations with first. That's my comfort, right? Like I need to get to know you, see what your energy may be through conversations, what types of things you talk about to know if I'm going to be comfortable enough to sit across from you and have dinner with you and, or sit in a movie theater. So it, I may not call it dating, but I would say I'm going on a date with this person because that feels like a date. Okay. How she said it though was just like she met a guy down the corner who asked her out to a dinner in a movie. It never yeah. sounded like they were, you know, having conversations and whatnot. <laughs> I mean, I, I think part of it is uh, this generation because we will ask the opposite sex just to like hang out, go get some mm -hmm. eat and catch a movie and stuff like that. And I think right. that's where the confusion sometimes comes into play of whether it's a date or not, and then the whole. Right talking and dating where before, previously they never did that. They never just went out with somebody for just, you know, hang out a little bit and stuff like that. Thank right. you, Katie. I was about to ask this question. What if you get invited and accept to come to the house? Because me personally, Miguel knows this. My strategy is to skip the date. I think it's a waste of time personally. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're uh -oh. trying to go straight to the dirt. All right, you're trying to get that coitus. But yeah, that cookie. Wee <laughs> wee. Oui, oui. You a cookie monster. <laughs> I think that's a question for the ladies TG is asking. <laughs> what if you get invited and accept to come to the house? I mean, I feel like you might know what what's going down if you come to the house. Exactly. Yeah, like how long how how long has this been in the works? Like I just met you yesterday and you invite me to your house. Ain't Not coming. Happen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to say this the though. Answer no, is, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. No, no matter when that invite comes, like if I know you for a while, whatever. But if I invite, if I skip the date, like Josh is saying, it still don't mean we're dating. And I invited you to my house. <laughs> we still gonna be talking. It doesn't mean no. I'm agreed. You probably be the yeah. cookie monster trying to get that. Cake. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> You're about yeah. to show me the hammer, as Josh says. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, as the son Agreed. of Odin, absolutely. And uh, yeah, so, all right, so guys, what do you think about the actual term dating? What does dating mean to each of you? Good question. Hmm. Because we often see, we see memes like this, but go ahead, Miguel. Well, I think, uh, go ahead, I'll read, uh, let's read the meme first. 
if you don't see your partner as wife, husband material, why are you dating them? Because we, we get the discussion a lot on social media, like don't waste people's time, da 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 da. But if some people think that we're talking, other people think that we're dating, I don't see how some person's time couldn't be wasted if they have some ambiguity there. What were your thoughts, Mingo? Well, that's correct. If you're not on the same page, so much time is getting wasted. But to answer your question, I would say uh, more like what Destiny said, if there's a continuum, like we're constantly um, doing stuff together, like now we're actually dating, we're past the talking stage. And also if it's been acknowledged by both parties that we're dating and not just like uh, uh, no assumptions at that time. And then, like you said, you go further, like exclusivity and all the other stuff, relationship and blah, blah. But in the beginning, I would say, you know, the, the continuum. And if we both agree, you know, we're, we're dating now. Yeah, you know, thoughts. Hmm. I would agree with Mike that there are levels to dating. Um, but in the beginning, I would say, you know. but, um, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> But um, I would say that, like, you know, you could be dating multiple people at one time. Dating in the beginning stages is getting to know somebody. So it could be synonymous with what other people are saying talking is, right? So you're getting to know this person to know if you want to continue to see them, if you like them, if you can get along with them. And then it progresses into, like Mike said, exclusivity and, right, date. I feel like you should date with a purpose, right? Don't just, if you want to date, date. Don't say you want to date and then sleep around with people that's different like you're just looking for fwb and that's fine too but to me dating there's a purpose there right i'm looking for something companionship a partner someone to you know have ex share experiences with build with whatever the case may be right but i think we talked about on a previous show about dating multiple people so technically you could still be dating multiple people and still be dating Right, that's what I'm saying. You could be dating numerous people and still call it dating. I don't think that changes what I'm saying, right? I'm getting to know different people at different stages, different times to see who I really want to pick as a partner, let's just say. Hmm. Fair enough. I, I feel like um, you can be dating. dating. Dating is not exclusivity. So you can be dating multiple people. Dating does not say that, okay, I'm exclusive. If you go beyond that, and we're talking about after we have become exclusive, and you know we've both decided, this is a mutual decision, that we're now exclusive, right? Then I'm sure at this point is also gonna be what we say on the show. You're gonna communicate, why have we become exclusive? What's the end result of this? Are we, as Ariela said, trying to keep each other's company for, now on until you know we don't want to anymore or is the end result are we dating to marry are we you know what's really happening here i think that's like how i would say it should happen you can always be dating dick tom harry and john mm -hmm. until you decide whichever one of these people you feel like you want to move to another step with now once you get there i feel like that's another decision again and then you move on from that that's how i i think about it I think, um, as I think about it more, that 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 guys, we use more of those terms to downplay situations like talking, um, especially after the fact. If someone said that you used to date such and such, you're like, no, nah, we should talk, you know, whatever, because you don't want to be able to know how deep you were with this person. So you downplay it as far as you possibly can or not. So. What I, Look at Big Mike taking accountability for the guys. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I wonder if the ladies would do the same thing. <laughs> it would, but he just said it. Guys came up with that, downplaying it. So I guess the answer is no. <laughs> nah, nah, we was that wasn't my girl. I was just sleeping with her. Yeah, exactly. Knowing oh, damn well you was giving boyfriend energy. Oh, all right, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but is energy enough, though? Mm. Is energy enough? Because I, I see this all the time, right? I remember having this conversation with a friend. She's in in her opinion a whole relationship with this with this young man for years. And the young man was very direct that she's not a person that he would marry. They're just 
two people in a foreign country keeping each other's company. So, I mean, it's energy enough. She was getting husband energy. But <laughs> He was not trying to be her husband. So. Right. Well, see, that's what we oh, talked oh. about previously about exactly. your actions matching your words. Thousand percent. <laughs> However, if the conversation was discussed and like like as Destiny said, if, if the parameters set are set up for you to be, let's just say having that quality time, but you're a foreigner in a different land, like you you're not gonna have that many friends anyway. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all about following what was talked about in the beginning. So there's zero ambiguity. And then we go back to the original point about people getting confused after having that conversation. But, so then what do you do? Keep bringing the conversation up? Like if you're giving me husband energy, but you told me you have no intentions on marrying me, <laughs> am I supposed to continue right. too, too. having the conversation with you saying, hey, you know, your actions and your words don't match what's up? Well, again, that boyfriend, husband, whatever energy is going to be completely predicated on that young lady's perspective. That has nothing to do with the young man. And that was That's what I was going to say. Does it have, but, it. And I agree with KG. Like, she's going to see what she wants to see. Go ahead, Big Mike. But to your point, though, Josh, then maybe the conversation should be deeper. Like, maybe she should say, like, you can don't do these things or I'm going to think you're my, you're my boyfriend. Like, maybe she have a, more, a longer conversation or whatnot. That way, you know right. what not to do to give her that energy. That's fair. Or whatnot. That is fair. And I, I think I think that that's one sided. Right. She's seeing what she wants to see. If you're showing me something other than what you're telling me, I'm not seeing what I want to see. This is what you're giving off. You're telling me you don't want to be my boyfriend, but you're acting like the boyfriend. You know, you, you come in to see me every day after work, you're taking me out on dates regularly. You booing me up. Right. It's not just a it, it's not just like a non boyfriend thing. Right. Whatever that may be to some people. Right. Like. I just see you once in a while, we go out to eat and then we go our separate ways, or we just have sex every once in a while and you don't spend the night. Like, you know, it progresses and the energy sometimes is there for people. So that is why they get confused. So I think it's 50 50. I won't just blame it on her seeing what she wants to see. Interesting, because the way I see it, it can happen multiple ways, right? Because you could still be hanging and banging, but some, some one of those people will think it's more than what it is. And that happens countless times, with, especially with our generation. So even you can have those defined parameters and have it exactly how you said, but later on, the person will be like, oh, I thought we were more. And we can go back and be like, wait, we said X, Y, and Z. And they'll say, yeah, but da, 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 and give you emotions. That's how people are. They're human. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't I think that. I think that the thing is, right, if, if it is, let's say I'm using my friend's scenario as, as, a, as a case study, <laughs> and we're saying, okay, fine, she and this guy, they're going out. He says, um, <laughs> um, he says, okay, fine, they had a talk, and he says he's not trying to be serious. He, he doesn't want to marry. He's not, he doesn't think that she's a person he's going to marry either. But in the moment and in their situation, they're fine. They're fine with doing things together and whatever. I would be looking at what you're saying, Ariel, and I would be saying, okay, fine. He's doing all these things with her. But then let's say they're in a foreign country. He doesn't really have the, he's, she's an option for him right now. And he wants to spend time with her. It's not like he doesn't. He just knows that the end result of this is not going to be marriage. I feel like if we had discussed this from the get-go, I should also check my expectations, right? Because if I, if you say to me, you don't want to be my husband, ain't no way my mind is going to start seeing us walking down the aisle. You ain't going to be my husband. That's just it. I'm going to just live in this moment. And that may also come off in how he sees it because then I am going to check myself and my expectations. So if you call me sometime and I'm not available, I'm just not available. Mm -hmm. If you want to go out and I'm, I just don't want to, I just don't want to because we are Agreed. not that serious. Agreed. I mean, I, I agree. I think there's a lot of things happening here. I think Ariella is correct, you know, because Ariella is correct because a lot of guys do, they want the cake and eat it too, right? True. They want to be able to <laughs> sleep with the girl and, and have fun with her, but still like take her to the movies and go out to eat and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. that's where you get that uh, quote unquote boyfriend energy. And we as men. And they don't you know, want somebody else doing it. They want to be the only one. Sorry. 
saying. Right. But <laughs> you're but we you're assuming that we're thinking it's boyfriend energy. We're, we're, we're thinking we're just chilling. So that's why I feel like maybe after all this time, these conversations need to be had early where all the parameters are set. Not just I don't want to be a boyfriend, but maybe, you know, what things could I do to make you or, or what should I not do to make you feel like it'll be more? That's a weird conversation, but at this point, it's, it can avoid a lot of problems. I feel like. mm -hmm. And KG says, if she, he wants monogamy, it needs to be agreed upon. If not, it can be assumed to be or not to be something more. Absolutely. And she says, actions have to match your words. You can't act the way that warrants a certain type of reaction and then be surprised when signals get crossed. Absolutely. But I'll, I will also have to add the caveat. You have to be socially aware to know what these signals are. Or you're going to be you're going to continuously be confused so there has going to be there's going to need to be some personal responsibility so if you're not aware of these things and this happens to you often you got to take accountability be like okay this happens to me often perhaps i should do what ariel suggests like check have a weekly check-in even as a bang buddy and be like listen are we still banging buddy because i may or may not catch feelings yep agreed or, or and i would say that in the beginning like i said so. Right. And if if that weekly, you know, touch point or however, whatever the frequency is, the person still saying like, no, I just want to be, as Josh puts it, bang buddies, then sis needs to change how she acts in that situation. Moving does forward, she right? want that or not? Exactly. Right. Can I and if she, handle if she does that? want that? Right. If she does want that, then just keep it there because then your expectations, like you said, destiny won't go past that. He could act like whatever. But I know in my mind. It's just my bang buddy. I'm not crossing that line. My emotions are not going to get mixed up right. in this. Well, and for her part, if he asks her to go to the movies or go out, he, she shouldn't go. She should keep it where it's at. And she should say, no, right. I'm not doing anything with because I know where my feelings will go. That's right. where she should be accountable. With. Agreed. And, and Steve, Stephen Glass says, yes, stop expecting and live in the moment. And not true on not wanting anyone else to do. To do. So you should have options. Everyone's got a choice. E40 voice. E. Everyone should have a choice, but there are men out there who want you to be a choice, but they don't want to be a choice. They want you for themselves, but they want to have, like Mike said, their cake and eat it too. So you can't, I can't have the fun, but you can. And I'm supposed to just be this imaginary girlfriend that you don't want. But again, ev like you said, everyone has their choice. So if you agree to that, that was your adult decision to agree to those parameters. If you set the parameters, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, oh, those, those parameters are usually set. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they're implied. Is what the problem right. is. Yeah, like nobody communication. Right. right. Is what, but also, implied. at the again, I'm just going to play devil's advocate as the son of an attorney, right? So if those parameters of being hanging and banging isn't implied and dating isn't, isn't con excuse me, and dating isn't talked about either. And those are implied as well. So it still it still didn't go anywhere. So either the hanging and banging is going to be implied or the dating is going to be implied. And neither party is taking the accountability for any of those actions. I agree. Neither one. Neither party. I, I you know, the weirdest thing is. Adults not actually wanting to say, "Hey, what we doing here?" <laughs> right. That's, That's just the too. weirdest thing. Like, yeah. if I feel yeah. like I'm getting a little feelings, and I be like, "Yeah, well, I like him, like him," I be like, "Hey, what's up with this?" And he's like, you know, this this ain't happening. I ain't really feeling it. Okay, my choice if I want to continue that, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing is like adults not ha actually wanting to have that conversation. I've heard so many people say, yo, like my boyfriend, and then the boyfriend show up and be like, hey, this is my friend. <laughs> 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 this is, how did you not have that conversation? What right. are you? See, that's what I'm talking about. You're mine and I'm single. But again, it, it's a, a solved it. with communication. That's it, right? You can't assume in any situation. Can't assume. Absolutely, but again, you can't assume, but you also be can't. You can't. You got to be an adult. You made an yep. adult decision, as Jason Moore said last week. You made an adult decision, right? You got to stick by it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, because a person will only do what you allow them to do. So, a lot of times, you know, where 
the females accountable in the situation is that if she keeps letting the guy sleep with her and then hang out with her, but then don't give her any official what we are, then he's going to keep doing it over and over again. She's got to put her foot down at some point and say, like, this is not it. That's true. But at the same time, she's also going to have to mm -hmm. compartmentalize and manage those expectations and leave those emotions at the door, as Destiny said, right? But she's allowed to change her mind and say, now I want more. But then she has to speak up about it. That's what I'm right. Saying. Everybody's allowed to change their feelings. If you if you're with somebody and you feel like, OK, this is going more. But still, you can feel that way. It doesn't mean the other person got to feel like that. You always right. have to remember it takes two. So if you mm -hmm. feel like you're at a certain level and they're not there, then you still got to come back and check you because <clears throat> you're responsible for you at the end of the day. You cannot then come back and say, okay, this person did that to me or this person made me do this or that. You are responsible for you. That's why we're adults in this. You got to take some accountability. You know? And I will agree, right? Younger me would stay in a situation, in a talking situation, be like, <laughs> oh yeah, we're just talking. He says we're just talking, but I, you know, caught feelings and I'm like, he'll want he'll change his mind one day and he'll be my boyfriend older me the adult me is you know use your words and speak up and ask what is this right like what are you looking for because i don't want to waste my time and i this is what i'm looking for so so i also have a question because let's say the the man friend zone and the female friend zone are different so i'm just asking as a as a guy here right so sometimes <laughs> The female friend zone can also include coitus. And at the same time, because you're friends first, it can be easier to transition into that boyfriend dating category without having any discussions. And you'd be doing all the boyfriend activities because you're their friend. Say it's me. <laughs> I would say actions and behaviors. What is the exact question? Can women <laughs> go from sleeping with their friend to them being the boyfriend? Without the conversation. No. I, I'm not saying people don't do it. People probably do it, but that should not happen. That doesn't make right. sense. It shouldn't happen. I guess it could happen. Yeah, it could, but that it happens, that right? But those are sense. those are people not using their words, right? Like we just migrated to a whole relationship without having a conversation. Why would you do that? There are no parameters, as you guys spoke about before, set there. Like, right? There was like, it happens, right? But as an adult, like, no, no. Because now you're moving your stuff, and now I gotta have a drawer for you. We can have a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nope. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting indeed. So our next topic is having sex before marriage. Does it ruin the relationship? Does it strengthen the relationship? Is it better to wait? And before we get there, I have to start things off with a comical meme. So glad you could make it. So tell me about yourself. I like to let the sex come first. Before we think of things to say, before we dive into our most... See, for me, bad dick is a deal breaker. No matter if you're smart or you're fine, so before it's worth my time, so we might fuck soon as we yeah, meet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once, twice, maybe three in a row, then if, if that chemistry is there, we can begin to get to know. Because the pressure of leading up to the physical is something mm -hmm. in the past that done made the mistake of investing in men that yeah. can't make me shake, so I need mm -hmm. to know if my body could fuck with you. Mm -hmm. Before you introduce to my spirit, because if you want to talk after you fail to make me come, I ain't even trying to hear it. See, with most, most women, their pussy is their only possession. They make men work before they lay. Be selective with who they let touch their bodies and then give their hearts away. Mm -hmm. My prize possession is my energy, too. Mm -hmm. This vibe is rare to find, so you can penetrate this body before mm -hmm. you get into my mind. <laughs> Ah, wow, that was a good one. That was funny. Would love to know your thoughts. That was crazy. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Mm -hmm. Ladies, who don't go first? <laughs> Destiny, you can go first. 
me. <laughs> it is your destiny to go first. It is. Oh, uh, you know, sex before marriage. Okay, so as the as the backslider on this panel, <laughs> I will say. Um, I will say for sure that I know people who have done this, right? Who have saved sex for marriage. I know some who have done this successfully, and I know some who have done this unsuccessfully. All right. Um, would Destiny do this? That's why Destiny is the backslider on this panel because no, she would not do this. All right. Um, the girl in the video right now, I mean, I feel her on some levels. Am I going to do like the sex on the first day kind of thing or the first time we met kind of thing? Probably not. But I get what she's saying because um, a lot of people pull the sex as the prize, right? Like is this huge thing that I ain't going to give you up until you do X, Y, Z and W and J and all of these letters. But then there's so many other parts that you actually find out that you don't even like this person after you don't have sex with them and you don't spend all this time with them and mm -hmm. you're like what what why are you here because <laughs> we don't even click like that no more i mean i've seen people date somebody not even kiss them then kiss them and be like um <laughs> mm -mm, we ain't going no further than here so i mean <laughs> Maybe it will work. I'm not saying this is not me saying to everybody here that you're not supposed to or do what destiny is. This is not saying that if you feel that this is something that's going to work for you, <clears throat> right on, right on. But like you asking me my opinion, I'm saying like, is sex really that big of a prize? Have you ever had sex before? Do you know what you're looking for in sex? Does this person provide those things? Are you able to do another round and another round with this person without grossing yourself out like Damn. do you know any of these things <laughs> Ooh, yeah, i agree a thousand percent because i feel like that eliminates most of the herd right because at the end of the day there if you're not going to have explosive sex with someone then they're going to be automatically disqualified from anything else so for me, it literally articulates my strategy and illustrates it perfectly to skip the date and get right to it. So we, then we can go from there and then see where we can go. We all know you're the cookie monster. We know, we know, we know. Oh man. <laughs> I do not encourage shit, have you? And I don't. <laughs> I don't understand these comments. These people are joking, right? Say, <laughs> so, I do not encourage saving sex, period. Oh, saving. Okay. I, 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 I had wrong. to read that twice because I didn't I thought I it said having. Saw. Yeah, like, I saw what, what you saw. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I okay. I, I agree with them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sex, not having sex before marriage. Mm. Like Destiny said, for me, that's not something I would sign up for. Um, right, Chiquita. Huge dice. It definitely is a dice roll. Um, <laughs> it's an important part of a relationship, in my opinion. Um, just like living with someone before marriage or whatever you decide to do. Um, but I also don't agree with the girl in the video, like it's going to happen on the first date right. and it's going to be three, four, five times or whatever, right? That's, there's certain energy around that for myself that I like to protect and I'm not probably not going to have sex with someone on a first date. Um, but I'm definitely not going to be waiting 90 days either. Right. So I have to find my happy medium. And when I feel comfortable enough, um, that I want to do that and get to know that person and give off that energy to them in that kind of way, that's when that will happen, but not saving it for marriage. No, absolutely not. Miko. Um, I'm bringing your point up to the homies. That's funny. Um, so the, the no sex before marriage is not, that's that's not even realistic to me. I mean, that's realistic <laughs> ridiculous. I'm just saying. Um, because I mean, marriage obviously is the biggest commitment of a relationship. So you can't sign yourself up, up for that, but without knowing all the aspects of the other person. So, you know, that wedding night could be a horrible night and you're like, what have I done? You know? So that's not something that you wanna you know, you ever ever wanna do or whatnot. Um 
even though younger me said he would, but that's another story for us. Not, but but uh, don't worry, Mike. The younger but, me said so too. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when but, I was um, like 15, 16, I was like, yeah, no, no, no I'm going to do that. But um, oh, so the whole like right. What she said, the whole, like, right now, before we even go out on a date and stuff like that, I think that's a dangerous game she's playing, too, because, yeah. you know, I, I might look at you differently. Not like you're, um, you know, like a hoe or nothing like that, but <laughs> I, but I might not want to put the effort into dating you as I would have if I got it right away, right then and there. I might mm. be thinking every time we get together now, we, let, let's do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that could definitely change how I approach our whole dating life, I would say, because you gave it to me. Expectations, all of it, you know, that quick right away. So, yeah, I would Absolutely. say that. Absolutely, especially if... I need the same time before sex, and then I need to separate from sex. Sex without hair is like a sandwich with no bread. <laughs> <I need it. laughs> yeah, I don't Birthday edition, what up, Big Mike? <laughs> and that great Josh laugh at the end. Um, right, it's the laugh for me. <laughs> it's the laugh, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's some big set as well. Right, but um, yeah, that would be a little. I mean, uh, I mean, I can speak from experience. That definitely changed my perception when it happened for me. So I will say that one hundred percent. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow. Okay. 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 <laughs> he said he's a PK. You say you're a PK, right? I am. Yes. So it's it's expected. Yes. I'm not a PK, but I'm a minister's kid. Like this was expected <laughs> of me. <laughs> Deacon Levant, absolutely. That's funny. I'm gonna add a little bit of a caveat, right? And I'm gonna speak specifically to the gentleman here who actually do know what they're doing when it comes to coitus, right? This is a simple suggestion. Now, I agree with, as a dating strategy for ladies, I definitely think you guys should perceive it that way completely. But for the gentlemen, for those who know what you're doing, it actually might behoove you to actually actually have a life partner who saved their self for marriage. Because if you do know what you're doing, you're going to be able to bring more of your spouse out and then Again, speaking very frankly, I feel like most people who engage in premarital sex have a whole phase, for lack of better words. So that whole mm -hmm. phase would actually be with you and you would reap all of your rewards of being with that person. So that was just a, some respectful advice for the gentleman. What, what about the experience that you would be looking for in your partner, like her knowing how to please you and in the bedroom and make you feel good and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> that is a, a marvelous question. And I'm going to just rely on, let's say human, human nature, right? So if someone gives you an amazing experience, naturally your inclination is to reciprocate that energy. So all of her focus, energy, desire will be on discovering how to do that to you. So essentially you have a, a canvas that you can paint. But I remember specifically you saying that if you get bad head, you're not even willing to go further. So a woman who has Thank never you, been touched, however, she gonna give you no good head. So however, how are you going to do that? But again, this is what I'm saying. This is a strategy, a specific strategy. I didn't say it's Josh's strategy because Josh is okay. <laughs> exactly for those who do know what they're doing. You may want to engage in the strategy because it would open up a world of possibilities for you. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the strategy again now? <laughs> if you know what you're doing, because it doesn't apply right. to all demon, right? If you know what you're okay. doing, okay. you may want to wait. You, not wait. You may want to have be with a person who has sex, who waits to have sex before marriage to open it up, right? And then that whole phase would be with you. I actually get his point a little bit because if you, I get if it you too. <laughs> yeah, if you're with someone in that in that way, um, then she's a lot of times willing to uh, learn and willing to um, try things out differently because she hasn't done it yet. So that's and, I mean, I see what he's saying, but I still like KG said it's a like it's a dice roll. Like you, yeah, absolutely. You expect someone to reciprocate that energy, right? You. You know what you're doing in the bedroom and you give her the works, right? She feels amazing. 
you're expecting that same energy, but how can she give you that same energy if she don't doesn't know what that's like or she's never given it? But you guys are kind of making my point for me. So when you're entering into that strategic partnership, you're already going in understanding that they can't do that. And you're already OK with that, which is why you made that decision. Number one. Number two, this is why my leash is a lot shorter for those who have engaged in it and it's trash. Right. That makes sense. Because then, you know, you go into it knowing that you got to teach her how to become better and stuff like that and things of that nature. So, and that's why you have less patience. And as ladies already articulated on the show, if a dude gives you bad top, you're not teaching them. Right. Especially if you did it Right, right, right. That makes sense. Interesting, Josh. I think, though, that it's it's so much easier for a man to date to be with a woman who's waiting for sex than for a woman to be with a man that's waiting for sex. I think, again, would be like, I get I it, think that it would probably be easier for a man to be with a woman who's waiting to, for sex than for a woman to be with a guy who's waiting for sex. I agree, because most likely everything that you're saying is going to come to fruition from your perspective, ladies, because the guy literally won't know what he's doing. And it'll be a, a huge hurdle to to learn that. I feel like the learning curve for ladies will be a lot shorter on the other end of the spectrum, which is why I said specifically for the gentleman. Yeah. OK, <laughs> you're betting on her, not your, you're betting on yourself, not her. Right, exactly. <laughs> you bet that, that that you could be a great teacher. Like <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. You uh, run the risk of being unfulfilled for a long period of time until she can match what you're giving her, or ever. Right? Like, what if she's never able to match what you're giving her? Then what? You marry somebody and you don't know, break up because the sex is trash. But to, again, to to your guy's point, I feel like you have to do the homework, right? You know the type of person that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. So if they have that reciprocated energy, obviously they're, even though they're a virgin, you're still gonna have sexual conversations. It's not like you'd be like, oh, it's wedding night. Let's see what we got underneath the quilt. That's not how that works. We talked about this last week too, right? With this whole Deval and Kadeem thing. She was doing one thing before they got married and then they got married and things were different. Not saying that actually, your actually, scenario no. Actually, no, because I was trying to explain that because I listened to the the entire podcast. Actually, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. So it wasn't actually, different no. for them, but some people say that, right? Their wife is one way before they get married or before they even get engaged. And then once engagement marriage happens, it's like, wait, what happened? This is not what I signed up for. Right, but that's but usually, I what you're saying. Actually, I guess right. it could work, but right, but that's usually in the case where coitus was premarital, right? So this is why the conversation is sex before marriage. So if you do it or choose not to do it, and I'm saying for the gentleman, you may be pleasantly surprised if you know what you're doing and you're patient, because it's kind of like the concept of compound interest. You're not going to get it right away, but when it rolls in, it's going to come in complete abundance and you'll probably be living a life that few men will ever ever get the experience so it's just food for thought that's what i that's what i'm looking at like the more he's saying it the more it's like because like, you yeah. know i like like i invest in stocks i got some short-term stuff i trade every day but then i got like apple that's like my long play so i don't care what happens with that but that's gonna hit big you know what i mean so i kind of feel that and then i'm like you know like i, I agree with kg for the short term but the girl who's experienced might be she she might peak and that's all you know what i mean like it's gonna be great but it's peaking here the girl who i'm teaching who knows what she can peak at so it's it's, it's a gamble but unlimitless yeah. potential in addition to steven's point of betting on yourself you're right. the you're the x factor so I, i'm right. always gonna, you know bet on myself in terms of that and i think the gentleman should do the same because what she won't say is stuff like well my last boyfriend liked it like this, or the last guy I was with, he was he was he was able to do this. She ain't got none of that experience. So right. okay, I see what you're saying. So she's always gonna do what you like. It's not she's not coming in with experience from other people and having to relearn. She's learning from the jump, and she's only gonna do what you like from here on out. And Mr. Skid uh, Pesh Xbox, I'm more of a PS4 guy myself, but respect you, my bro, for commenting. Bad, has, bad head is a myth. If someone is willing to try, then it should eventually be what you want. And again, that sounds good. But honestly, I think the ladies will be able to back me up here. 
no matter how hard he tries or how, let's say, uh, passionate he is, if he's trash, he's trash. If he doesn't have the proper technique, nothing what he's do with his passion is ever going to surmount in a climax. Hmm. Guess I don't have experience with receiving bad head so i can't comment on that i mean he could get better right if he's watching videos or asking you girl and... let me tell you this you don't got no experience i got experience <laughs> that shit scares you you don't want him down there no more ain't no trying again you scared now you're like what no, i know when she oh, said that man. i was like wow everybody every guy's been great for you that's amazing that's good <laughs> girl i'm telling you that's good on you but i'm telling you if it's bad you don't want him to even look <laughs> in that direction well, what about you josh have you got some bad talk before you. i have and i literally stopped the person in the middle of it and i right? hold it up I did, I did the same thing nah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say everybody was great, but I can't say I've had like a bad experience, right? Like you get that's better, great. and that's wonderful. Blessings on blessings. On blessings. <laughs> I was just because Mike was like, "Wow, everybody was great." I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't say that, Mike, but right. say I had a bad experience. Well, we're talking about bad heads, so I was just, just rolling with that one. <laughs> Absolutely, and KG says he has a point, but you either win big or lose big big with this i think marriage is too much to wager that's fair but i think we all have agreed that even marriage is excuse me even coitus is a pivotal part of marriage it's not the main ingredient it's like not like the main entree let per se but it is the vegetables which is the most important part of that meal <laughs> yeah but if it's really important to you you want to make sure it's right before you get in that marriage right and i agree if you're dating someone who has premarital sex which is why I said my strategy for the gentleman specifically. All right, guys, rolling on. Yeah. <laughs> we have wasted too much time on that one. Absolutely. But I do like uh, Miguel's strategy of playing the uh, the pump and dump scheme, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Whoa. It's, a, it's an actual stock term, so. It is, know. yeah. Nothing sinister about that whatsoever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we also had another meme that kind of was somewhat related to this, I guess. Hmm. Oh, before you play that, I want to say to KG, he should like your strategy. They don't have to ask about the girl's numbers because <laughs> you already know she got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how do we feel about this? So shout out to Hood Ratchet TV and P Work and the great people over there. None of us finding true love because we all had sex before marriage, or all of us. So do we think that having sex before marriage, since we sent since we all think that is the best strategy if engaging in premarital coitus, should we be surprised that a lot of us aren't finding love because of this element? No, I don't agree with that. I have nothing more to add to that. I don't agree with that. <laughs> A whole lot of people out there not having sex and still not finding true love. Thank you, Destiny. Agreed. I think this is a stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's what agree with this at all. In Skidapesh Xbox, I mean, it's it's. It's actually, my, it's actually my, my brother Nate, by the way. Skidapesh. Well, go ahead. Okay, Nate Dizzle. Yo, your name should be that. What you doing know with this name? <laughs> after getting married, I prefer nom 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 on her than her on me. And again, that's fair. Again, I, I'm not going to comment on anyone's significant other, especially if they're a spouse, right? But I was just saying, in let's say in a, a single situation, right? If maybe. And I hear this a lot with ladies and verify if it's true or not. But if let's say if the people who are performing cunnilingus on you aren't bad, you might prefer actually doing it on them first and vice versa. So that might be a reason why as to they prefer to do that. So he prefers to go down on her more than him on her or him, I guess is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Yes. Yeah. Should live together before marriage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We all agree with that. That comment is silly. Yes, it is silly. <laughs> 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 nah, <laughs> you missed it, bro. We talked about it already. Yeah, we had an uh, extravaganza just for me go. All right, guys. <laughs> now we're going to get into the other memes that we have. And we are going to start. <laughs> since we talked about dating, we're going to start with this one. <laughs> Look at Ariella's face. <laughs> I'm so tired of this. Me, girl. I'll be tired. Well, I mean, you're tired of it, but. <laughs> okay, so I won't say that it's not true for some people, but I feel like it's exaggerated because it's definitely not true for most people. Um, if If you. I, if a guy wants to accept that for movie night, then that's up to him to accept her looking like like she about to throw him down or something. I don't know what. But I mean, I don't think I don't think that that's I don't think so. But also like a lot of men say they prefer their women to not be all done up all the time, right? You don't care about the makeup. Um, she don't always gotta be dressed up. She's at home chilling, if it's moving it, right? And like Destiny said, everybody's not gonna look like this, but she's at home chilling. She's not gonna look like how she looks when she goes out with her friends. Yeah, exaggerated. If she goes out with you the way she looks on movie night, then that's something to be talked about. But come on here. Well, again, I think the uh, point being made, because obviously it's made by a guy, right? So the point being made here is that what you're getting at home doesn't measure up to what other people who don't know you, who aren't committed to you, are getting out in the world. So why which, are you accepting that? Right, exactly, right. But why are you actually giving it as well? So it's that it's that mutual accountability that we're going to continue to meet at into perpetuity. It's unreal, but okay. I hear what you're saying. Well, well, where, well, <laughs> well, where are they at in a relationship? Like, are they if they're living together in a marriage and stuff like that? Um, I could see her not. This is a little exact. This is very exaggerated. But, but if they're just going to the movies, I can see her not getting that dolled up to go to the movies with her husband. Now, if they're still, now if they're just dating, then it might be a little different. So it really depends on where they're in the relationship and stuff like that. Right. And I also think it does depend respectfully how each person looks because some people might need to get glammed up to have this appearance. But I agree with you guys. This is exaggerated. But how much is there a difference between you getting glammed up versus you being at home? If you being at home, you're getting this as opposed to something that should be a little bit higher, even without makeup, even in sweatpants. That would hopefully be a better presentation than that. That's literally the point of the meme. Yeah, right. I see the knows. point. Uh, I'm sorry, Ariella, go ahead. That's okay. No, go ahead. I see the point of it, but you know, at the same time, as you said, it's like accountability. If I don't want that and you step out and we go watch a movie and you come over to the couch looking that, like this, I'm going to just say to you, why don't you go put something different on? Or why are you looking like this? It should be like if we're a couple couple, right? Um, and mm -hmm. also, I still agree with the other side of it where... You know, if you're living with somebody, it's different from you dating them, right? right. If you're all not living together, as Mike said, because then you don't see the parts when she got to put the rollers in her hair to make it come out all curly. <laughs> and when she got to put the mask on to make her face all flush and whatnot, you ain't seeing that part. You're just seeing the end result. If you live with her at home, you're going to have to see all those parts, right? <laughs> So I'm just saying, like, you know, it's kind of different. I'm not saying it should be all this exaggeration of this night and day, moon and Venus, but 
Yeah, Tiana is hilarious. Right. And Steven says that's why you go for the queens with natural beauty. Absolutely. Hair ties, sweatpants, chilling with no makeup on. And Kiana says, give them back to the streets. And I agree completely because that's the point of the meme. If they're doing all that for right. people they don't know, that's to me, that, that's a flagrant issue. Of but epic. also, she knows her partner, right? And like Destiny said, if he had a problem with the way she looked coming out to watch a movie with you, you're gonna like your partner is probably gonna say something like, "Yo, put something else on." Like we're going out, or or, or we're staying home, whatever the case may be. She knows that that's acceptable for her man, so that might be okay for somebody. Like Stephen said, are we shaming here? Well, okay, that again, that's fair to say. But let's. Just, uh, this is why I said what I said in terms of the range of difference between when you're glammed up versus when you're not. Like if that range is like insurmountable, kind of like how this one is, even though Taraji we know is a gorgeous person, right? It, and this one is exaggerated, but that's the point. It's social media, it's to exaggerate the point of the meme, which is, okay, if you're, again, if your range is here at home, but it goes all the way off the board when I'm not around or like when anyone, like you're going out for, to see other people, then it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Like, are you doing things like not going to the gym? Are you not taking care of your skin, things like that. Like all those little things, right? If you're not doing when at home, is there like, to me, that's a, a flagrant red flag. Yeah, but there's also a thing of like natural comfort, right? So as long as you're with somebody, especially if we're living together, the more comfortable you get around them. So you kind of like, that's, you, you got to speak up. Somebody got to say mm -hmm. like, listen, you know, I know that you're not really, you know, looking like you used to look is maybe, you know, maybe we need to go somewhere, whatever it is. I don't know. But I think people do fall into comfort zones that and they have conversation. That's all. Like that. So don't get too comfortable, basically. Great point. Cause she looked very comfortable in that, in that meme. I there. mean, cause after, after a period of time, I'm going to the movies with sweatpants with my, with my woman. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, let me go, go to the movie. So, you know, you gotta, the comfort comes naturally and stuff like that. Right. But it was, it was movie night at home. Even at home, that's even well, okay. So, are you getting uh, spruced up to watch movie night at home? Right, that was my point. Right, so I agree with Kiana's point. What does the dude look like? So, if he compliments her, there we go. But most likely, the reason of the meme was that it was not that case. That was the message conveyed in the content. So, in this meme, ladies, when you <laughs> do swings, do you want your space or attention? As I uh, sip my Aquarian water here. <laughs> I can sit back on this one again and sit my essential with it. <laughs> I'm about to take mine up too. Like, what is this? <laughs> right. Oh boy, this is silly. Shout yeah. out to Hood Ratchet TV. <laughs> I mean, if you if you know your lady, you know what she needs, right? Mm -hmm. You know if she needs you to lay it down because you haven't couple days you know if she needs her space i'll tell you i need some space or i need you know i need to be cuddled and held or something you know like i need some d you know what i'm saying like your lady should tell you if she needs something specific she should tell you i'm gonna tell you every woman is different first and foremost Mm -hmm. There's no way for one woman to answer that question for all women. Mm -hmm. so everybody's different. Some people may be giving attitude just because of X, maybe giving it just because of Y. People are different. I see people going to fits when they're hungry. I see people go silent and not, literally not say nothing. I see people fight. I mean, everybody is different. So talk to the person, as Ariella said, find out what's up with them. Okay, so both of you didn't answer the question. <laughs> so, yeah, I was about we to did. Say, Thank you, Miguel. There's I, no, I there's the no way. I mean, like, guys, be, be, if, when you're in a mood, there's no way for me to answer that question for another girl so when she's in a mood. No, no, How no, do answer I know? for you, though. No, no, answer for you when you ain't, when you're in a mood. Me, you when I'm in a mood, I'm a communicator, I'm verbal. Okay. So if I don't want you around me, I will tell you specifically, leave me alone. If I want you right here, I will tell you, I want to be right here, right here next to me. Me, I'm verbal. I communicate. Interesting, because we actually have no cap Chloe in the comments on Hood Ratchet TV, and she says she wants both. 
Hashtag no cap clo. Well, what about that's you, not Ariella? Every woman is different. I answered. I said the same thing. You I'm going to tell them. If I want to be left alone, I'm going to tell you I need space. Well, or, no. I guess I'm saying because you guys are saying it depends on the situation. Like, I've asked girls in the beginning, if you were in a mood, what do you want? And they can say, no, I'm a person that wants space. So they know what they want, no matter the situation. But you're it depends saying, on the mood. Yeah, no, I can't tell you. If I'm moody tomorrow, it could be for a multitude of reasons. Okay. So like yeah. this, you said, every woman's different. So some women could want both attention. It depends on what's happening, why I'm moody. Because let's say, for example, I'm dealing with my business and I'm having a bad day. Like, I got deadlines and stuff. Like, you messing with me. I want to be left alone kind of thing. You know, the, the next thing, like something with my family or something. And maybe that time I want you closer and I want to actually talk. Like, it really depends. And that's completely fair. But I think the point that Mike was alluding to, which is kind of the, the thesis of this meme here, is that sometimes as guys with girls, we are put in damned if you do, damned if you don't sure. in situation. So even though you say in this moment, I want my space, if we give you that space, which is very easy for us to do, in fact, we would prefer it. Right. So we give you that space and then you still get upset anyway. I think I see what you're saying because there's some women who actually don't say what they mean kind of thing. So they may say they want space. Well, and you're gone too long and they feel like yes. you're giving them too much space. Yes. Right. So yes. I, I understand that. Yes. I oh, understand oh, oh, oh. what you're saying as well, but I think it's a little juvenile. Like Destiny and I, Destiny and I said, use your words, communicate. You'd be surprised how many women say, I didn't really mean I want space. You know, <laughs> they didn't want a space. No, I, I understand <laughs> what you're saying, Mike. I, I, yeah. I feel you on this. It's like, it's like if you say to somebody, like, I want space, and then they're gone, like, okay, I didn't really mean you should leave me for an hour, two hours, 10 hours. I right. get what you're saying there. But at the same time, I mean, like, if I say I want space and I see you're gone for an hour and I need you back, pick my phone up, say, yo, like, I'm over the space now, please come back. Right. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm different. I can only speak for me, so I'm just saying. And if he uh, doesn't pick up the phone or answer right away? <laughs> then I send him away. I got to wait till he comes back. Right. I gave you what you wanted. You can't be mad at me now. That's, no, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what you feel, John. Right. You always <laughs> think we are here capping. We're not. You're telling the truth. In, in this situation, man, in my history, I've done more of a saying, like, I want you to know what I want or know what I'm looking for. I don't want to have to tell you in that situation and stuff like that. So that's But it's hard to put that on you, though, Mike. It is. Like, if I'm being a realistic person, I'm not emotional that kind of way. I just got to talk about me. It's hard for me to put on you when I'm going to be over my mood. That would be crazy yeah. of me to think that you're going to figure out when I'm <laughs> done with my mood. That would yeah. be irrational. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you didn't give her the applause before she said the same thing earlier and you're like quote unquote <laughs> and I also put it up there when she said it again so there we go <sighs> and the next meme is Twist? I don't think so Spongebob <laughs> is that you? I've been waiting for you Patrick <laughs> SpongeBob, you're scaring me! <gasps> Ladies, is this accurate at all? <laughs> <laughs> no, I might get into a mood swing and then I'll tell you, like, look. <laughs> this is what's going on. Just hurry up. Let's get to it. <laughs> 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 and our next meme is probably a continuation from a previous conversation which was compared to hats now throughout this entire video <laughs> i want people in the audience com to compare this to hats on men oh where the book is a transformer this no man, the woman out here deceive we are the deceptor can this. My God, watch out. It's the accent for me. Up from my Jamaican brother right there. 
Bumba <laughs> plot. Yo, what is that? <laughs> what? that? That was not like the hats because that was a whole man. Okay. Mm, I don't know what that is. People have never <laughs> been doing that. <laughs> mm, and again, makeup compared to hats on men. I, again, I still don't understand that comparison, but apparently. We That's said this the other day. Like some people be going real extra, extra. Like I would never blame a guy if this happened to him and he just walked right out the door. She's a whole different person, different race, different everything by the time she took that makeup off. So and that wig or that mask, whatever it was. Whatever it was, right? I don't even know what the hell that was. And I would just say, un unfortunately, oftentimes in current day. It's not going to be that extreme, but again, it's a it's a meme to over exaggerate and make the point that it's still the it's still the makeup deception. That, that, you know, you know this this does exist, but let's let's be realistic as women right here. There are a lot of women who do 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 this, but then there are some women too who may have issues right? You know, scars or whatever that they want to cover. And the truth is a lot of person would not accept them without those coverings. So I would not say overall that, you know, you can't do, but I feel like there's a point where you just overdo, especially like in a normal situation, you want to make yourself up for some events or whatever, fine. But then there is a big, big gap in what we just saw there and what's like reality. And that's what I was going to say. I feel like social media has turned a lot of this over exaggeration into the real world, like where people feel like they have to do that. Right. Like Destiny said, there's a lot of women that walk around that do get made up like that. And then there's the other the women who feel like they need it because they have scars or things to cover up and feel like they won't be accepted. I think that all comes from social media. Like yes. reality is there's like there's people walking around like that but like that's not your everyday people that you're gonna see you know when you're in princeton or you know wherever in the state of new jersey wherever you are it's a social media thing i think so i mean like you walk around and you see hard you hardly ever see people with like this full on face makeup every time you see them kind of thing I, I do understand, though, that there are situations where this does occur. But then again, like, I mean, I live in Jamaica. It's hot out here. You, you <laughs> hardly ever see people walking around with, with full faces of makeup like this. You know what I mean? So then again, I mean, and it's also dependent on you. If you get with a girl, any guy that's listening to this right now, and she looks like that, bro, like, head out. Right. <laughs> Just head out, like you make don't it to stay for that. Enhance your beauty, not make you a whole right. different person. Right. And our next meme is kind of related to our original topic from a lady, Asian the brat. Please have at least three bodies before you talk to me, boy. I like killers. Cause that's essentially she's paraphrasing what everyone said earlier. So I don't know why we shaking our heads. Cause I wouldn't say it like that. It's, silly. <laughs> it's the killer's part that got me shaking my head. It wasn't everything else. But as right. you guys have already articulated, it's social media. They over exaggerate it and she's taking the same liberty. Well, to me, to me, to me, to me she gave, no gave us to me that she gave us specific numbers kind of interesting to me. Right. Why just three and not like nine? Or right, two? right, right. That's a preference. But at least. <laughs> what if the three was like one one time, one, well, one time with the other one, and one time with the other one? <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't really mean anything because we got three bodies either. Like, that's. <laughs> exactly. <a> useless. <laughs> or. Or they may not be arbitrary numbers, Miguel. Perhaps I think after, let's say, three different partners, perhaps she thinks she can coach them up to her level. And maybe that's, that's all she needs. She just needs a dude with three bodies. That's it. It's actually not something I've ever thought about, right? Like, you need to have slept with X amount of people before I can pursue anything with you. I've actually never thought about that. So I wouldn't even be able to give you another number. Yeah, I, I do. I do agree with Miguel. I do think the numbers are arbitrary, but it is an interesting number nonetheless. 
And then our last meme is one that has to do with communication and kind of illustrating the damned if you do, damned if you don't conundrum. Tell me the truth. I won't even get mad. I won't get mad. Are you sure you ain't gonna get mad? I'm not gonna get mad. Just tell What's me you? if you slept with her yesterday. No, I won't Are get you mad. Are you sure you ain't gonna get I mad? I won't get mad. All right, well, I slept with her. So here we have another example of being, uh, let's say, say communicating, being honest, and yet still damn, like damn. Don't mm -hmm. ask questions you don't want answers to. That's definitely my philosophy, yeah. but I think ladies specialize in that quality. I mean, well, she was clearly already mad and stuff like that. Right. He was she was boiling, not even yeah. mad. She was right. boiling. Right, 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 right. The, the comment on that said she didn't What's lie. Her sign? What's her no, sign? I think like the post, I think the underneath um on the post said, Well, she didn't lie, she got irate or something. I don't forget what it said. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, violence is not the answer. Amen to that. I bet she's gonna still stay with him after she acts mm -hmm. up all that. Well, that right. Point. Well, well, he's still, well, he still stay with her after that. <laughs> that's that's the question. Probably. Right. Like you said, you wasn't going to get mad. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, ladies. You're not doing all that for somebody you don't care about. Word. Like, all right, cool. You can get your stuff and go. Wow. No, that's definitely not what's going to happen. <laughs> I've done it before. <laughs> Okay, guys, now we're going to get into our portion of the show where we can have our moment of truth, Q&A, a term and segment coined by KG, shout out to KG, where everyone gets to ask juicy questions out of pure curiosity to everyone else, either on the panel or in the comments. Feel free to get in the live comments now. So who would like to go first? Birthday boy, I'm going to especially extend this honor to you, sir. Man, I had to run this thing last week without Ariel and, and everybody else here. Uh, oh, sorry. Now you good? Uh, uh, give me time, Josh. Let's let's, let's let the ladies we, go first. You, I was gonna say you could ask the same questions because we weren't both weren't there for it. Uh, this is true. You remember what I asked Josh last week? <laughs> oh. Oh, I thought you had them written down. Yeah, Miguel. Uh, I might have somewhere. Hold on a second. But in the meantime. <laughs> 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 Does anyone have anything written down? Um, I do. I heard it really quick, I think on another podcast or something. So I don't know if I captured it correctly, but it was essentially just like, would you switch roles with your partner? As men, would you switch roles with your significant other? Wife, girlfriend, whatever. So, And do you think you'd be successful at it? So switching roles. So we're talking about the very defined gender roles. So it's uh -huh. be the stay at home dad that takes care of the kids, does the laundry, does the cleaning, all those things. That or whatever your partner's role may be. Let's just say that she does go to work and whatever her job is, could you do her job better than her or as successful as she is at that? And, you know, being your girlfriend, right? Whatever she does in your relationship, it doesn't have to be like a stay at home mom, cook, clean, cook. So wait, say that it's part. different in everyone's relationship. Could you say that last part again? Because it sounded like you said, could they do the same job the same? Yeah, could you do the same job that your partner does and be successful at it? Uh, or do you think like, no, they're good at what they do. I would never think that I can do that, like her role better. Role oh. in terms of job, but also in terms of your relationship. Okay, absolutely. Because oftentimes we actually have, you know, married couples or whatever who where the man is the better cook and the better chef. So that that, that happens often. But I would say in terms of, uh, let's say, child rearing, I don't think anyone on the planet is going to be better than a mother personally. But that's just my own perspective. Okay. Um. I was looking for my questions, but you're basically asking, can I switch roles? <laughs> yeah, with your partner. And do you think you'd be successful at it? 
Yeah, I think I, I think I could, and I think I could be successful at it. I think um, I, I wouldn't expect her to do things that I'm not capable of. So I think that I will be able to switch and be successful in that way. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Great question. Yeah. All right. So I have a couple of questions that um, I was given. All right. So first, <clears throat> is there a difference between sex, effing, and making love for men? Yes. Yes. What is the difference? They're all three different things. Sex can be something, you know, uh, going through the motion. Effing could be like porn star ish. And making love is when you slow it down and really uh, connect on an energy level with your partner. For me personally, you go. Pretty much the same. I mean, um, sex can be more of the regular thing. Effing can be more passion, uh, not more passion, I would say uh, more intense. I would say, um, and then making love, maybe more passionate and like you said, a little slower, maybe add some things to it and things of that nature. Do you have those, sorry, I don't know if this was part of your question as well, but do you have those with different people or can you have those three types of sex with, um, do you have to have it with different people? I forget what I said. Well, yeah, can you have it with the same person or do you have to have it with different people, sorry? It, it's only going to be determined based upon that person. So not every person is going to be able to handle the porn star session and not everyone's going to be able to bring that making love element out of you either. Right. But I feel like for the most part, each each uh, let's say each person who would be able to get all three is all always going to have the sex component because it's just like going through the motions. So I think that's the one element that can be shared between all of them, but not not everyone is going to have all three. I would say it depends on your relationship with the people. So the girl who's just the, the friend with benefits, like I can't make love to her. You know what I'm saying? Like I just don't don't feel right. So it depends on the, the relationship with the people. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Another one is, um, hmm. Do men actually want to settle down or are they actually afraid of settling down? Interesting. Cause I feel like those are two totally different things. Being afraid to settle down is being afraid. So the questions I'm just the, the oh, asking. Yeah, I understand person. that. So I'm just gonna break it down for the question asker. So thank you for submitting those questions to <laughs> I do think that you either want to be settled down or you don't, type of thing. And the only fear that might may come up or may arise is if that you're essentially coming into your own as a man, maybe you're 30 plus, and then someone tries to tie you down and they're an amazing person, but you're not ready to give up that lifestyle yet as well. Um, yeah, fear, the, the, yeah, they don't really go as like polar opposites to me. They're kind of different categories of uh, fear and wanting to. I think, um, I think all men eventually want to you know, maybe at different stages in life or different ages, but I don't think no one wants to be 65 alone, 75, you know, at the end of the day. But, um, unless you're Hugh Hefner, but yeah, but he wasn't alone. He had 40 people in the house. I mean, alone, that's what I'm saying. So, but that, but but, that's my point, like, you could still have that lifestyle at that age if you do the right things. That's all I'm saying. Right. I understand. Um, but, uh, fear of settling down. Uh, I think only if he feels. I don't know. I don't, I don't think. I don't think we have a fear of settling down at all. No, no, no. That's what I think. Interesting. Yeah. Quite. Any, any more deaths? <laughs> or area? I ask. I'm waiting for them to come in. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, so I, I got one from, from, from last in. week. This stuff. So it is funny because it actually goes with our previous. Um, subjects today so it was about titles I asked, I asked Chloe last week but the question was are titles more important you think to men or women I'd say women <laughs> Josh <Yeah. makes> eagerly <laughs> I would say they're more important to women we always Destiny. want to know what are we what are we doing where are we going with this 
Okay. So there's a follow-up question, but that's an English term. Yeah, I, I say yes. More important to women. Our women are usually the first to initiate these conversations. Okay. Is is there a deadline when your partner I'm sorry, is there a deadline when you or your partner needs to clarify the relationship? Or can you just keep going until yeah? Or is there um, like a soft deadline in your mind or anything like that? No, not like 90, 30, 90, 30, 60, 90 days. No, for me personally, no, right? I, it's like a feeling, like we have to go with the flow. I don't have a timeline on, okay, by six months, I have to say I love him or he has to tell me he loves me first. And then, you know, I don't have that. Some people do though. <laughs> Some people have whole steps. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I met this girl who said like, there's a first date, then the third date you gotta ask them in then the fifth date you gotta give them a cookie and then the next day they got it this and then there's the whole process of um giving the key and then after you get the key you get a drawer and then after you get a drawer you get a whole like there are people out there who be crazy but for me personally i feel like you just gotta ride with it you know it goes where it goes there's a flow to it and if you're feeling like, yeah, you've gotten to this point where you want to ask those questions, then go right ahead because that's how you're feeling. And mm -hmm. you're entitled to understand how the other person is feeling. Hmm. So, uh, okay, this is going to bring up another question. It's not on my list there. So if you, um, if you bring it up and they're not, let's say, ready for what you're ready for, then what's your next step there? Your choices. You you have the choices. Either either stop or continue. You and can you either evaluate. Right. You 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 can you can break it off right there, if you feel like you you can't handle continuing with it. Right. So as she said, you're going to evaluate in yourself, check yourself, and say, okay, can I continue, without no understanding that I already feel this way and that person doesn't, or am I just going to call it a day, call it quits? But if they're not there yet. Do you continue and then ask again at a certain time, or do you just then let it play? If you're later? willing, if you're willing to, yes, okay. continue right. rolling you with it. You know what you're ready for and what you like willing to do. If it's something that you're willing to wait for or want to wait for, then yeah. But mm -hmm. if you're like, mm, I don't really want to see if he is going to change his mind and feel the way that I feel for him to catch up to me. Okay. And the last question was, if it was the other way around and he was pressuring you for the title, uh, would you just end things at a certain point if you keep getting the pressure from him? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. See, the thing oh, about wow. me Oh, okay. I don't necessarily like pressure like that. So I would probably end things because you cannot rush my feelings and make me want to do more in this situation with you just because you're there, right? We can have a conversation and I will be very respectful and say, hey, I'm not there. I may say I'm not there yet if I feel like I can't get there with that person or I may just say like, maybe we're not compatible because I don't, I don't feel the same way, like respectfully, right? I think it's important to be honest and have that conversation. I don't know why you look so shocked. I just hear mangoes falling on his head right now. <laughs> <laughs> As he sets his face like that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm probably gonna, bye. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, me personally, me, this is for right. Ariella. Right, 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 right. Right. There are a lot of people who wouldn't. A lot of persons would be happy to get that pressure. Um, I've been in that situation, and I don't think that's a fun place to be. So, I mean, I remember just not being in the same, not wanting the same things, and being constantly asked why I don't want those things, you know, or like, you know, trying to coach me into wanting those things. And I'm just me. I'm, if I if I say I don't want something, I'm not going to change my mind tomorrow just because you done did something I like today. It's that it doesn't work like that. So yeah, I mean, a lot of persons are super. Um, I'm not saying that women don't do this, and I know of a lot of situations where women are actually excited to hear men following them and chasing them and wanting these things. But if you're asking for me 
for me, probably I would just end it because I don't want to be pushed into something I'm not ready for. Mm -hmm. Wow. And asking does not mean, you know, it's the same thing. Like if I'm asked, it's the same answer. And if I ask, I expect you to be honest and open and give me my answer. So if I, if you ask me, I'm going to do the same thing. Be honest and open and give you my answer. What you do with that and what I do with that is what we're talking about, right? The result of that. So if mm -hmm. after I'm honest and open and say, okay, I really am not at that place yet. And he, that person feels like it's their responsibility to say, okay, but why, but when, and then, and blah, and blue then now the relationship is not us just riding with the flow and enjoying anymore. Now it's something else. Wow. This is why I'm completely flabbergasted. My head probably has a contusion from all those mangoes, right? Probably have a concussion because at the end of the day, as we discussed before in the previous episode, the topic was forced monogamy when the ladies typically put the clamps on the fellas and give them ultimatums. But when the ladies receive that same energy, you guys get this response. So this is why I'm just like, wow. So you're generalizing us. You're putting us in a box. And I think the ladies on this show are, let me speak for myself. I'm not giving anybody an ultimate, right? I don't want five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line, you to look at me on the other end of the couch or whatever and be like, yo, I didn't really want to do this, but you gave me an ultimate. Like, I never want to be in that situation. So it's not something that I would give anybody. Why? So that's that amazing. And you're literally articulating how every man in the, word fit in the world feels when they get that pressure. So your original question was, do men want that, in they want that pressure? Essentially, no. no. No man wants to be in that situation. But oftentimes, we're in that situation. So I appreciate you guys articulating that in a very authentic way. Because I would say men everywhere would agree with you. They're probably giving you a standing ovation right now. And I'm, that's no cap at all. That's literally how men feel, like, throughout the world, number one. Number two, I just hope some ladies are actually listening to the wisdom that you are bestowing upon them so they don't do things like that and have them feel this way. What I, what I feel is, like, even from that conversation, because I was listening even though I wasn't on the panel, um, is that... There are persons who, like she said, you know, if you want to be with me, this is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. There's also the accountability for him to say, okay, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like straight up, I, I don't want to yep. do that. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, I get, I get it. There's some, not some people who are just not like us. Yes, and I feel that. But then, still, like you know, ultimatum at the beginning of this relationship, you're gonna tell me if I don't do this, then what? If I don't do this, are you crazy? We ain't gonna do nothing then. Like right. it's gotta be over right here. Right. Cause it's like you you're trying to tell me right now at the gate before we even done got nowhere what it is that I'm supposed to feel and do and be. That's and crazy. I think I think that that pressure, like once someone puts that pressure on you, it's probably time to be out, right? Because it lasts for longer than just that conversation. For me, it's in the back of my mind, right? I've been in a situation like that before, right? It's kind of like, I think we've mentioned it before on the podcast, like somebody in a situation is gonna like somebody else more. And when you find that, when that becomes apparent, like that's hanging over your head. Like, it's like, okay, well, they're gonna be expecting X, Y, and Z from me. And I probably can't provide that, whatever it is that they're looking for. So I might as well just cut my losses now, right? You're gonna buy me more gifts so that I can start to like you more, like you the way that you like me and, you know, start doing all these extra things. And that doesn't feel good, that's not comfortable. So I think it, at that point, right? If you know that you're not going to be at that level, for me, it's gotta cut that off. And she says, how the hell can you force monogamy? No one can force your hand in the way that you don't want what they want. However, cheese, if you actually do are feeling someone, but maybe you don't want to be in a monogamous situation, but you like them enough, you will acquiesce. And I disagree. I think you yeah. said it last week on Destiny just said it, right? Like you have to take accountability. If you yes. don't want that, you say that. I no, I like you and I want to be with you. Yes. But I can't be monogamous, right? I'm not gonna force, I'm not gonna be uncomfortable in this monogamous relationship if that's not what I want. 
Yeah, see, I understand. I definitely get what you're saying as the overall uh, force, you know, because you can't force it. However, you're saying if you're first saying I'm taking myself away unless you do this, then it's not. You still gave me an ultimatum in some type of way or whatnot. You're not telling me, yeah. If you say, if I say no, okay, you can have me any other girls. What you're telling me is that it's either one or the other stuff like that. So it's kind of a, I guess, not really a force. It's not a force. You opted into that. It's not a force. Nobody put a gun to your head and said you got to do this or else I'm gonna kill you. No, 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 no. This is what I want. I want you and other women. You're telling me. No, I can't have you another woman. You can only have then don't then you, and then you me. make a choice. Then right. I want you to huh? <laughs> but I would have to make that choice. But I wouldn't have to make that choice if you if you But if you didn't give me that choice, I wouldn't have to make it. I, it would she come up anyway opinion. though. <laughs> yeah, it would come up regardless. I think uh, then mm -hmm. your choice is to be with other women. She don't want to be a part of that. So let her it's go. It's the same let way if a guy her. come to me and say if I say to a guy like, yo, like I really don't want to be exclusive right now. Like, I'm not really trying to be exclusive. And he says, but you got to be exclusive because I ain't going to date nobody that's not exclusive. Then, okay, bye. We ain't going to be mm -hmm. dating no more because you don't want, you want to be exclusive and I don't want to be exclusive with you. But she, Okay, if you gave me a piece of um, uh, an apple and a pear on a table and you said, and I said, I want both. And you say, no, you have to choose one. You literally forced me to choose one. There's no way around it. This is different than a relationship, though, right? We're talking <laughs> food and we're talking relationship. If you love her enough and you're like, all right, I could be with her in a monogamous relationship, and that's what you choose, that's what you choose. She didn't force you. That is your decision. She, wow. put, the, she put the option in front of you and you chose, you chose her. All right. Well, it's it's interesting how we came full circle in the conversation. I know. <laughs> when we, when we first started, it was all about you know accountability for the guy. It's right? accountability for both persons. Right. No one but is also, saying that the lady. But also, is we, okay we we did start the, the conversation okay. saying that men usually lead women on, and then my caveat was like, wait a minute, perhaps they're perceiving the situation differently, right? So again, it comes back to that decision. So this is interesting how that uh, there's a little bit of selective morality there. It's not selective. I think, you know, if you come to me and are like, you know what, I'm Polly. And I tell you, well, I'm not. So if you want to continue with me, I'm not Polly. Like, I, that's everything you need to know. I already put it out there in the universe that I'm willing to lose the situation because I'm not switching to be Polly from a monogamous person. Now the so ball's in your court. This question, though. Should she change who she is just so she can be with that person? Good. If question. she's yeah, not polygamous, for example, she is all about being monogamous. And you want to be polygamous. Or what, what's the word? <laughs> you know what I'm trying monogamous? to say. Monogamous? Right. And she says she's not trying. Should she change who she is to be with you? Again, <laughs> that's her choice. Uh, right. the same thing <laughs> it's just on the other end why can't right. you understand it from it's that also point of view? your choice you saw well, this girl down the street and you say you want to be you with her and you here say to her well okay so 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 we're missing people. a part we're missing a part of the scenario and that this, it always goes okay. back to that particular me the part of it is where he said that if you force monogamy, then his forcing his expectation. If you force a monogamy, then I want this much sex all the time because I can't get it with other people and stuff like that. So that's the that, that's the part that's missing. In the whole so thing. why oh, is it not considered forced polygamy though? That, to be why can it be looked at the same way? Why is it not? Why would you not consider it forced polygamy, polyamory, whatever the term is? If she says, "I can't, I, I can't guarantee I can provide this much sex that much," um, so maybe, uh, you know, but I wouldn't also be okay with you having other people. I mean, then yeah, he does have a choice at that point. So I mean, I guess I wouldn't call it. Are we are we talking about? You like, know what? You're right, Ariel. It's, it's forced. <laughs> You know what, Ariella, you're right. It's forced both ways. I agree with you. It's, it's forced both, both ways. It's forced I'm both ways. I'm trying to figure out what we're talking about because then I just... Well, no, because the, because the whole thing about the forced monogamy goes back to Kadeem and uh, Deval. But he only he only brings that up because he's not getting up the sex that he wants right now. 
That's why he's bringing up right. Forced monogamy. But then right. again, he's been with that chick for 18 years. Nobody's going to be the same after 18 years. And in the full run of the podcast, he started out by talking about their past. But essentially, when he was with her initially, he was getting it as often as he could. But right. then her body couldn't handle it. And right. then she had UTIs and whatever. And then the sex wasn't the same. But he said in the podcast that he is getting it three, four times a week, but he still wants it more than that. Right. right? I'm not saying <laughs> that he shouldn't want it more than that. But then life goes through changes. And yeah, she's kids. had three kids. Yes. She's had whatever. And then I do remember that persons were saying her mom lives with her and she should have blah, 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 blah. The mom doesn't live with her them permanently. She visits sometimes. She doesn't live with them permanently. But at the same time, it doesn't affect what her personal body is going through. They have to have that conversation as to whatever. But if you start out a relationship with saying to somebody, or he was actually getting it the way he wanted it at the beginning right. of the relationship. But I don't think you can realistically, 18 years into your relationship, expect like well, her it's sex more drive to be the it's same more as when she was a teenager. Was well, more ten years because he was good ten years ago when they first decided to get married. At that but point, but still, but still, yeah, there's no way yeah, for I, him to expect that her sex drive is going to be the same as when she was in her early twenties, in thirty six years old with three kids, two jobs, and whatever not else she's doing. Well, yeah, I'm just she, saying. Was, she was twenty six, but at the same time, this is why I said last show side check. <laughs> but they're married. Side check. Obviously, he does expect it. So I gotta say, that's he, you're right. He, he, maybe he no, no, should, he, but he, he does. He, he does, but then he was. It was kind of complicated what he was trying to explain because he said that um, they're trying to bring the conversation to the forefront so that persons can have the conversation. And he feels like, but he talks about not getting sex a lot. So I feel like this is a problem for him. But then he did say that, like, he feels as though her role with him has made up for this because they have a great relationship together and their kids are cool and he still wants another daughter or whatever so he's he'll he'll be satisfied with what he's getting <laughs> yes he, he seems to be on a relationship in this situation he seems to be playing both sides in his in his, in his complaints but um, well, he still got to lay next to her at night, you know. That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same point, for the general, though, for the general, yes, this is a conversation that I feel people should have. And I don't agree that if you, if I'm with somebody and I say you're monogamous and you want some and I'm going to be like, yeah, why are you on me? Ain't that no, no, I'm going to give it. Like, I, when I want it, I want it, too. So if you want it, I'm going to give it because when I want it, I want it. Yeah, but he gets it. But he said to her, "Why feel like sex is a chore?" So my, I, I, I took it that he wanted, but he wanted to give it half. Because she doesn't like sex. She said that right. before in one of her podcasts that they were correct, right. correct. So it's still not good enough for him to get it. He wants it giving. But he happily. knows this about her because they've been together for a long time. So right. that's in their relationship that they got to fix. Because yeah. and again, about her. it wasn't forced. He knew this he when knew they got together <laughs> before they got this. married. He said that he also said that. He so he made the choice, kid. the decision to marry that woman, knowing she was this way before. And have they a got whole married. bunch of kids with her. And I mean, you guys have articulated. Sometimes <laughs> your mind changes. So true. I'm just this saying, side chick. But that's complicated because they're married a whole bunch of kids. But again, but he said, she said after do. every kid, her sex drive drops. She did. This is she tested, did. tried, and proven. Postpartum right. is a real thing. Absolutely. And he still says he wants a so, yeah, yeah, she and did. as you guys said, it's a conscious decision with the accountability. So, just as he should know that her sex drive would decrease, shouldn't she know as well, or no? Or are we disavowing her of that personal accountability? No, 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 no. Yeah. She She'll knows. Know. She's already said it's that. happened before. Yeah. All right. So, side chick. Yeah, if he wants, if he's not satisfied, I guess they'd have to talk about that. Right. They both have to be okay with that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they already had that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't never gonna be okay with that. <laughs> and they had and they had that publicly. So for me, that yeah, side yeah. chick for sure. But I, I still do say though, you should not be like there's no way for me to say 
if you're in a relationship, don't you reevaluate? We said this like a couple podcasts ago, right? Mm-hmm. You reevaluate. If if we're in five years in and I feel like, yo, you dropped off someplace, I got to check that. What's up? Like, are you okay? Are you, you know, what's going on with you? Same and I expect the same for me. Because, of course, as Mike was saying earlier, you do get comfortable sometimes. And maybe things change and whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have to have that conversation and say, yo, like, I want it more often than I'm getting it right now. And then I also have to be accountable to say, okay, am I willing and able to give it to you more? And if I'm not, then I also have to check myself. Okay, if he sleeps with somebody, am I going to be okay? Or do mm-hmm. I want to know the girl that he sleeps with so that I can say, okay, when he's not with me, he's with Julia and I'm fine. Julia, we be sister wives. You know, <laughs> you can take him when I can't kind of thing. Like, am I going to be okay with this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And Clodis brought up a great point last week. So imagine in this situation that the dude is not satisfying her. So as Destiny said, if he's not getting the job done, you don't even want him to look in that direction for certain things regardless if you're married or not. So I know for me personally, if someone is not satisfying me to do to that complete being fulfilled, I'm going to want to do it less as well, because I feel like I'm wasting my energy because they're not being able to reciprocate the experience that I'm giving them. Chief, I mean, that you have sense. to be accountable from both ends. Yeah. But, and, but that's the thing about reevaluating. I think, um, also, it starts from picking the right person in general, so you don't have to um, see. See, I'm not. We got to worry about them, but not big drop offs. Like, like, if, like a woman. Like, don't like if you like to go out, try to get with the guy who likes to go out, not the guy who's taking you out because you like to go out. Right. Because mm-hmm. he may point. he may fall off from doing that because he only like going in the first place. But right. if you already like to go, he'll keep going and taking you with him. So just got to think about but, those things. But you know, though, though, Mike, like back to her point this is something that let's say she already knew that she didn't like sex but then women bodies change a lot different throughout the years mm-hmm. than men bodies do this is mm-hmm. also something that may not be accounted for initially because she could be like a bunny initially and then after her first kid she just doesn't feel like a bunny no more no more this is also a possibility that i feel has to be taken into consideration when you're going long term with somebody also, a woman can have like bacterial infections and stuff like this that could just probably stop sex for a while or change how she feels or a lot of different things. So I feel like, yes, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking away from your point. I'm just saying, though, that this mm-hmm. is also women's bodies change a lot differently, especially if you're going to factor in kids and stuff like this. Over the years, over the long. Oh, I agree years. with you. I was talking about other stuff, not sex. I agree okay. with you on that part, though. Women's bodies do change, and kids play a big role—not just the bodies, but kids themselves are very, very demanding. And, and, and on top of that, you know, uh, if you got a job with the kids and all mm-hmm. that stuff, that's a long—that's a long day for anyone. And depending on, you know, where the help is coming from, like you know, I think we talked about it before. We talk about people. Um, how many times a week you have sex. Some days you're just tired. So, right. you know, it's going to happen. Absolutely. And Lala's fantasy says you have to find an individual that you can come in sync with, that you can vibe with. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But as everyone's articulating, those vibes can change as bodies changes, right? That's part of the aging process. So I feel like you guys have articulated a great way for men to argue for the side piece. Because me personally, I would just put everything you guys said, <laughs> and then that's exactly why I should have a side piece. For that reason. So thank you. If your woman agrees, why not? And if if, if if she doesn't agree, you can leave her ass and go find one that will. Absolutely. And we also have another amazing content creator in the building, Mr. Tony Stark Jr. What's going on, guys? So uh, this is really cool. I finally get to meet Mrs. Ariella, Little Mermaid, and Destiny. Just want you guys to know I watch every single show. So all the crazy stuff y'all talk about, I've been watching, been listening. I'm sad I can't see KG. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, guys. I do a Thursday night show, so it's hard for me to watch you guys live. But um, I watch it 
and on my way to work well listen as i'm driving and sometimes i'm at work so josh no i come actually i comment on everything but after the fact so you guys probably well you guys josh always respond but you guys don't see it because it's already after the fact but um i had a bunch of my people t was telling them to come and jump like lala just came from my stream and um just want to say thanks for having me josh as usual and um i appreciate it i appreciate the support my boy big mike obviously we're you know that's my guy but uh so what's going on what are we talking about here <laughs> so we were talking about if let's say uh your significant other specifically a wife is not right. giving you the required sex and coy we were talking about that video that we talked about on our show that you said it's right, right. divorce from and whatnot so josh is still saying side key so <laughs> um listen i'll say this okay the side piece thing like josh like to say again y'all gonna hear me repeat stuff y'all say because i'm the biggest fan all right and the biggest josh wearing fan so i watch all his stuff um so there's definitely an exception right and the side piece would be the exception like the average person ain't letting you have no side piece let's be clear however if they do listen more power to you and you got to give let's say a guy right if my wife say listen for whatever reason my downstairs ain't working like you guys will talk about the girl had three kids every time the sex drive drop and she's willing to let you have a side piece cool but i think that's definitely the um that's not normal like people aren't going to do that uh if they do listen I, I i feel like this whatever you guys agree to that's on you i don't care about what the rest of the world say people look at you like oh you're a swinger you got a side piece because this and that listen what's in my bedroom is in my bedroom right but I don't think nobody's gonna let somebody have a side piece. So if you can pull that off, I say go for it. You know, you know your woman and your woman know your man. So you know if you can be like, you think I have a side piece, whether you're gonna get slapped or not, right? <laughs> so um, you know, but um listen, I say if you can pull it off, go for it. But I don't think that's realistically what's gonna happen. Now I think what realistically is gonna happen is the guy's probably gonna be cheating and get himself a side piece anyway. So Absolutely. And Lala's fantasy says that person's hormones can change and their means of feelings is not always justified where the men get upset or even women is stressful for both parties. Absolutely. Because even if you communicate like, hey, significant other, I'm not getting what I need. But at the end of the day, you're, if the response is, well, my body's changed, that still doesn't solve the issue. You're putting a big date on it. Yeah, because you guys had something that was important, but I feel like you didn't touch, right? Or maybe Mike did. I'm trying to remember. You guys mentioned that, um, you know, take accountability, right? So just because someone say, my bad, that, listen, you're acknowledging the issue. But uh, like Josh said, you're not solving the issue. So I can understand you saying, oh, I just don't want it as much. But they ain't helping me. All right, cool. You don't want it as much, but I still do. So now what are we going to do, you know? Right. And if you're not giving as much top as Miguel needs, I ain't going to be enough. Because <laughs> he wanted every time. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. And I think sometimes, sometimes that, that, that mandate comes in a form of fixing it for the moment. Right. right. And it goes back to being unfulfilled. And then the conversation comes again. So it's like a revolving door with this issue. Right. Um, comes back to it comes back to matching like lala said being in sync with that person and matching their vibe sexually right like i said before it's a big part of relationships whether or not right. people want to say that sex is a very big part in a relationship and a marriage especially if you're going to be with this person forever in the long haul y'all have to match that aspect and I think I think a part yeah. of it that people forget is this big thing that married people put in your face all the time, compromise. If she's not really feeling it after a while, I guess it's not just, okay, fine, I'm going to lay back and let him take it kind of thing, and it, I don't really want none. And then he ends up saying she's he feels like it's a chore for her. That means he's not going to enjoy it either, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just mm -hmm. like, okay, it's Monday night, let's get on this force and do the thing. Right. So it's up to now her for it, her to be able to say, okay, I want to be in this relationship long term. What am I going to do to make this better? Or right. what would you expect from me? Kind of hash it out kind of thing. And then not just be, okay, let's do it. I'm not really feeling it, but I still right. want to do it kind of right. thing. But I don't know. They, they seem kind of up and down in what it is that they're 
trying to accomplish. So. Right. Because if we're being completely honest as guys, there's not going to be any commitment. There's not going to be any wedding vows without that consistent coitus in the first place. So right. we're not moving what Ariel is talking about, a pivotal part, whether it's natural or not, it's still not being fulfilled. So uh, an adult conversation will have to ensue. And Lala right. continues to say the side piece thing doesn't really come into effect unless they want to be intimate as well or is willing. But a lot of people don't want uh, don't want a statistic. Right. So be straight up and see where it goes, because sex can come regardless if it's there. We take it. Let's be real. But at the end of the day, that's when communication needs to come into effect because we're so worried about getting off than trying to fix the situation. Yeah. But I feel like in this situation, the whole result would be getting the person off. So my, when I we watched the show last week, um, I had my wife tune like watch a little bit of the show, right? That the part you guys talking about, and she was like, I mean, here the more practical thing is not. Uh, you say, listen, you could just have a side piece, right? And I guess it depends on your relationship. But she was like, listen, we maybe we bring somebody in the relationship, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, you know, a threesome or something. But to just be like, oh, you could just do you without me is a little bit right. like, uh. Right. Now, it's going to be sticky. <laughs> yeah. And then also, here's the thing. So you, uh, I know you ladies are saying, the t or even Josh saying the term, um, you know, it's a chore for guys. Listen, we don't like pity sex, all right? <laughs> the last thing I want, like when everybody asks me like, oh, what makes one girl sexually better than the other? I always say it, me and Mike talk about it. Init Actually, Josh and me and Mike, when they had me on show a while, almost a year ago, we talked about what makes a girl good in bed. And I personally say initiation um, because I feel like there's nothing better than not having to ask for nothing, right? So if I don't have to ask for nothing and you just do whatever, cool. Now, even if you're really submissive, right? Let's say the girl that's like, I'll never say no, but I don't initiate. So tr full transparency, Josh and Mike know. My ex-wife, she was that good old girl. I was the third boyfriend she ever had. She just wasn't into sex as much, right? Um, You know, she said something that made Mike terrified. One time she's like, I never met somebody that one head as much as you. So, um, you know, Mike ain't trying to hear that. But um, so my thing was, but if I said, hey, let's do this, she's like, all right, cool. But guess what? That's pity sex to me. That's like, now I don't even want it because, yes, you're going to do everything, right? But if I got to ask for it, then it don't have that same value, you know? And Lala says we don't like, we have to have it do it because you love a sex. I, you know, neither. And absolutely. So I'm just curious, what would be a practical solution if the side chick is off the table? I don't know. I don't think it's either she's going to get herself, uh, work on herself, right? Figure out where the root cause of her problem is and try to, you know, there are pills and all sort of potions and lotions and stuff. I said stuff this last that, week. Uh, I said that, about right? so seeing a doctor, if, medical, right, whether, it's, if, whether it's um, hormone uh, replacement, hormone replacement or, or, or herbs, whatever she, yeah, that's what I said last yeah, week. She can do yeah. that. And for me, I would agree with Tony, right? I'm trying to yep. read your thing when it was there, right? Um, so I would agree with parts of what Tony's wife said. Um, like for me, if I feel like I can't, like once I know who she is, I'm okay. Like who, who, who are we going to pick? We're going to pick Julia? <laughs> right. Let's pick Julia and Julia going to know where Julia stands. Yep. You're going to be coming in every second week. I'm <laughs> fine with that. But like yep, because... if I don't know, then we right. don't do that. Because at least you there monitoring the situation and then you guys can have rules. Listen, you can do this and that, but no, that's off the table. You know what I mean? Right. Stuff like that for me is more, um, I guess, feasible. There's more like if you listen, like, uh, I, again, I'm a fan. I watch your thing. So in the thing, they said, listen, we don't want to break up our relationship because, you know, they built so much. Right. So obviously there because when Mike and I talked about it, I said, listen, the long story short, the end all be all get a divorce. Like it just ain't, if your sex drive is so high and hers isn't, then we just can't be together because I'm going to end up cheating. And then if I got all what he has, right. And then I get caught cheating and then I want to pay so alimony bad. and child yeah. support. Then no, I'm just going to end it right now. If I can't end it because I got so much, I don't want to break it up. Then listen, we're going to have a serious conversation. Listen, you might want to let us have somebody come into this, but I don't mess with girls. Well, you might be watching or you might be on the other side of that room. Because I feel like at least she knows, but if she just say, well, you just go out with, like Destiny said, at least she get the pick. Like, you right, know, right, I don't right. know about Jessica, but Jane, 
I notice uh, Destiny every time she do something, she she stick with the A's, she stick with the J's. Yes. I be like, yo, that's her thing, yo. Yes. She go, but yeah, you know, consistency. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, yeah. The unknown drives people crazy, so yes. I think that that's yes. probably a better solution than a side piece because she may initially agree to a side piece, but right. once you actually find whoever is going to be your side piece, she's not gonna be able to sleep at night living knowing. Yeah that you out here with whoever it is she don't know, like Destiny said, she gonna go crazy. When you come mm-hmm. home, she's gonna be asking you all types of questions mm-hmm. and that's not gonna be good for your life either. Yeah, so. so Fight Club, Fight Club. What happens in Fight <laughs> yeah. Club stays in Fight Club. You just exactly. pick a girl, let her know what the rules of Fight Club are. If you bring anything up outside of Fight Club, you will be gone. Mm-hmm. Finish. Yep. I agree. Solution. And Lala says it may not be only the female could be the male too absolutely sure. it could be That's one party true. may not be in the mood absolutely for the person is exhausted from work or kids etc right perhaps if they switch those roles to ariel's question people can expect sex all the time now if you're seldomly getting getting it then the problem becomes to the surface as to what we can do is that going to bring the spark back so we can so what can we do to get the to where we were so I had a question, right? Because we were talking about, you said, you know, if a woman, you know, her sex drive is not matching the man's, he, she should let him have a side piece, blah, blah, blah. What if it was the shoes on the other foot, right? Let's say her sex drive was in the basement before, and then all of a sudden it has an uptick now, and she's just so always wanting it, always wanting it. And you're like, yo, like, I don't want it as much as you. Like, say there's a switch. Are you willing to let her have the side dude? Again, that's fair. And I would also have to say, is the dude actually fulfilling her needs as well? Not if if she always wants it. But I feel like girls are most likely going to cheat anyway, even if the dude can't fulfill her. Interesting. Because they're going to get it from somewhere. I feel like both men and women are going to get it from somewhere if they're not getting what they need. Well, I think it goes back to you guys bring it up on the show all the time is uh, women are more emotional. Right. And guys are more physical. So if we're just not getting it, we might cheat. Right. But the woman could be sitting home like I don't I don't feel that attention and affection. So she so so that's what's scary. Not to throw the women under the bus, but what's scary with a woman is if they're not feeling fulfilled. It might be like, for instance. Right. OK, we're going to have Jane jump into the, the, the romance with us. Right. So Jane could come over every so often. Cool. Right. But if we have Harry jump into it every so often, um, maybe my wife might start falling for Harry because naturally women are more emotional. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, it, I'm just saying, you know, so that's a little more scary. But you don't know. At the end of the day, if someone say, hey, I'm not being fulfilled sexually, you, when you open that door, you know, it is what it is. You don't know what's going to come through the door. But, you know. And I think for women, you just uh, touched on something, Tony. I think for women, women are scared of that. They're scared that another woman is going to come in and the man is going to be more attracted to her. Well, she's going to do some things or she's going to have some tricks that he is now going to want her more than he wants his wife. Right. Again, that's what I said. Just saying. If you have certain rules. Right. So if you set up a little you could do this. But so listen, if you make something special for that other person. Right. So then when Jane come into the door or Harry or whoever, right, then something is specially, specifically set for you or for her that you can't do with that person. So you still get to be special, but at the same time, get to kind of dip, uh, dip into the, uh, hold on, how did you, what did you guys say the other day? Oh, wait, never mind. I was talking about, um, I was talking about something else. Let me not bring that up. But, um, But yes, uh, Makia Jefferson, I'm going to start calling her MJ because of Spider-Man. I keep hearing y'all say yeah. that the woman can do t- to appease the situation for the man because for the man. But what can the man do to help support her in a relationship? Absolutely. Good question. And what if the tables were turned and, and y'all weren't able to perform? Would the guys be OK with her having the side piece? But again, my, my this here is that that's happening anyway, regardless of the guy's permission. I don't know why you think that. I mean, again, I'm just hearing it from ladies. Ladies are going to get what they need regardless because they have a plethora 
of options. You said well, that only- she has the side. She's cheating anyway, even if she is fulfilled, even if he is sealing the deal. No, no, I'm no, saying. No, no, no. He I'm was saying, saying if I'm he was saying. Right yeah, sorry, but no. Well, Josh was saying if she, if, he's responding. If she isn't fulfilled, he was saying that she's going to go get fulfilled regardless, right? Whether uh, he's just saying she were pretty. If if the if the boyfriend don't say okay, let me help you be fulfilled some way. Josh is just mm-hmm. saying that she will go find it with or without his permission is what he's saying. Was the original point, it doesn't even have to be physical. It can be emotional as well, which will often right. lead to the physical. But right. it's also easier for a woman to stay longer without sex than it is for a guy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, also, typi- typically, you know, but there are some yeah. women out there that, listen, they try to rip your clothes off. So, mm-hmm. but, but again, th- that's more the exception, you know? And it's also two different roles. Like if a girl, if a woman is having that issue and she let's say, and she let's say suggest a side piece or is okay with it. Not that I'm saying that's the answer, by the way. But if right, she right. says that it's different than if a guy is not fulfilling her and then he says, Why don't you get a side dude? She'll look at him like you're less than a man, let alone the whole relationship or whatever like that. True. Like that changes a lot of stuff or whatever. The roles are just right. different and whatnot. So and then it goes back to something you guys mentioned. You guys went back and forth about this for a while, but Josh kind of coined it or got it perfectly. Uh, two guys and a girl is a train. <laughs> like, let's be real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, it's like your girl's like, oh, but I want another guy. It's like, well, you're going to do a lot of work, you know, because typically two guys ain't messing with each other, but typically two girls will mess with each other. So everybody's involved at the same time. So it's like, you really want another guy? Because listen, uh, it might be a long night for you. So that's real though. And I mean, he's satisfied that he becomes the cuckold or whatever. So that's yeah, even that, you know, that worse. Is, uh, the very accurate term. Thank you, Migo. You're so, welcome. <laughs> uh, beta cuck is the ac- exact terminology. So a lot less are men, if a female placed her body in front of you, you're going to take it. That goes for a female that's being hypocritical because guys do the same thing. If it's presented, both parties is going to take it if they're unfulfilled possibly let's right. be real if you're if you're in a certain state you're not paying attention or reflecting on these situations i don't know about that lala <laughs> well let me just say something real quick to lala first of all lala listen let me go with these super long responses all right let's just, let's just you know, keep it like you keep it on the the san anthony show all right just go on these long paragraphs all right trying to impress job and number two um don't be trying to leave our show and come to this show either all right listen all right just one because when i showed i showed them a little snippet of the video during my show so i was like all right let me switch to our to you show so y'all can see you know if we're gonna shut the show down and i'm gonna jump on so she was like oh i love what they talking about so listen josh if you're stealing my people bro we're gonna have problems i'm just saying so you know my my apologies sir but you did request to be on the show so i'll give you exactly what you asked for I mean, I made a request a very long time ago, but you was just <laughs> you remembered that. But anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's this is deep, but okay. So, so you know. Lala, since you're full of abundant, you know, energy oh. here, do you have a question for the panel? Because we're in the section of the show where you're. La- oh, you you want to you want to say, it, Tony? Yeah, hold up first. I'm gonna warn you, Lala is a good friend of mine, but if you follow her channel, all right, you might not want to ask her. It's called Lala's Fantasy. Her oh. channel, she gives oh. people advice on masturbating, giving oh. everything. All right, so you might be asking the wrong person. I just want the forewarning. It sounds like we're asking the exact person we need to know. <laughs> after eleven I, what, what, what you like to say? It's after uh, eleven, right? <laughs> 11. So, so Lala, come with it. Ask anyone, anyone questions, anyone in the comments, anyone on the panel for either for men or for ladies, whoever, right? And just ask a question that you think is pertinent to the dating topic or let's say uh, fantasies, whatever. Does anyone else have a question? Tony, do you have a question? Uh, this is cool because um, um, so not to take uh, Destiny out of this, but I've been watching Ariella for like ever. Right. So like <laughs> I told Mike, I said, um, Ariella is like my favorite kind of sort of because I feel like everything she say is like what I would say. I feel like her personality and the way she answered questions and stuff, like she's kind of modest. She's always trying to be like, you know, I, but then she'll be like, listen, it is what it is, you know? Um, 
Destiny, Destiny, you're like the um the guy girl. Like, listen, man. At the end of the day, you know. So um, but anyway, so uh, I don't want to be like you know you guys ask direct questions to certain people, but I just do want to say it is cool to meet Ariella and Destiny for the first time oh, on you. camera. But um, yeah, definitely. I've been watching. Like I said, I watch every single episode. But anyway, so let me ask you, ladies, a question. So, um, what would you personally do? Oh wait, let me. <laughs> hey, I, the, my, my issue with this show, I said the mic is like nobody want to answer no damn questions. I mean, it depends if the sun came down. Man, if y'all just pick an answer, so let me try to reword it so I could get an answer. When did um, KG get here? I was telling, uh, I wrote on the comment. I was telling Mike. I said, I don't know. KG might be my favorite person now. He just be like, listen. Anyway, but um, See how he does. He went from me to Ariella to KG. He <laughs> you yeah, was my dude. You was my dude a long time ago. But um, <laughs> um, so anyway, so ladies, um, so if you were in a relationship, right, a committed relationship, you uh, let's say two years, everything is going good. You don't have no issues, okay? All right, so I could get an answer, and. <laughs> And you, so everything's going good. I'm being serious, right? It's cool, right? But on a weekend trip, right, you meet this guy and it's like from the door, you like, okay, um, you know, he, he meets your standards when it comes to attractiveness, right? Like, all right, so he's above your standards, right? And uh, I'm trying to paint the picture here so I can get an answer. And um, you feel like, man, this guy is like, Wow, you know, and he, he just he say the right things you want to hear. You know, and you're on a trip, you're going for like a couple of days, right? Not forever. And so he's like, Well, he lived where you're at, right? Let's say where you're at might be, I don't want to say another country, but it might be, you know, the West Coast, right? And you're you know whatever. But you're in a committed relationship, been in there for two years, you have no issues. But you're like, this dude. And he's like, Listen, I got a room. I'm not going to be no stalker or nothing, but I really would like, you know, you to come hang out with me and um, painting the picture and your guy would never know ever. All right. So my question is, it's like a fantasy thing, right? Let's say you had a fantasy guy. I'm trying to paint this picture because I want a real answer. So a fantasy guy, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Feel me. Right. All right. So a fantasy guy and. I'm not gonna say what could go down, but would you at least um entertain going to his room to hang out? I'm not saying you're gonna go to say, oh man, I'm trying to get these walls knocked down, but um would you entertain um Ariella. huh? No, I saw Ariella drink and sigh a while ago. Listen, I, listen, she's like, man, I'm about to pour this water on my head. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is, would you, it, uh, again, I'm not saying you're going to cheat, but would you at least be like, you know what, I'll come up to the room to hang out. Okay, so it's not a case where I'm going to give up my guy for this guy. It's just that in this moment while I'm on this weekend kind of case. Yes, yes. It's never going to be anything ever again. But everything's going good at home. And I'm on this trip by myself. Yeah, let's you just know. say this. You could be with friends, but for whatever reason... At the time, like, you know, he just wanted you to, so at the time you got a legitimate excuse to be gone, right? So whether you went by yourself, all right, let's paint it perfectly. You are by yourself, all right? No one would ever know, ever. Destiny already saying yes, because I already know. <laughs> I don't want to know Destiny. I'm a fan, you want to do it. But I want to know what Ariel gonna do. I'm saying no, because somebody will know, I will know, and I would feel guilty. No, I'm not doing it. No. Okay. There's no cap here, KG. No. <laughs> I will not. Well, Ariella, could, uh, well, uh, sorry, Destiny, could we at least hear you say it? <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we know, but I just want to hear you say it. I mean, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, something would happen right there. It depends on what's going on. I feel, okay, so let's not say the press because this one is driving you crazy. Um, this guy is my fantasy guy, right? This is what right. you're deluding to. He's my fantasy guy from get go. We are like chemistry is up, drawn attraction kind of thing. I'm probably just gonna go with the flow. Mm. If I'm being honest, like I'm right. not saying like we're probably just gonna smash right away, but you never right. said that. You said I'm just gonna go check him out and see what's up. 
So you smashing if that's your fantasy guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. See, she's at least saying she'll at least entertain going to the room and you never know. Mm, I'm not entertaining. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. You're not gonna catch me out here slipping. Because mm -hmm. if my guy, if everything in my relationship is perfect, why right. can't that be my fantasy? Why is that not be my fantasy guy? Because he's not. not he said, because though. he's not. He exactly. He ain't. <laughs> everything nah. is great, but he ain't the fantasy. I will not get caught up. No. <laughs> That's not what he said. So it's the thing like, okay, I, I think about it because I know that it's a possibility for it to happen. Right. right, you know, it's not like I can't never say, "Oh, well, like I would never talk to him." Like it, it really depends on how you, I, I be feeling him. I'm using your words, so I be feeling yes. him. We be drawing me in chemistry, cracking. We go entertain each other a little bit. Right. Hmm. That's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. It definitely is, is, but yeah. we're being human. We're trying to be real, no capping, as KG is saying. But you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not capping. I'm just telling you. I'll see it from, I'll be like, nope, I'm not, nope, not even going to do that. I'm not going to engage in conversation because I don't want to get caught up. Gotcha. I know my limits. Yeah, but Ariel, let's be real. I don't watch the show a while. You ain't that standoffish. You ain't going to be like, <laughs> do be like, hey, how you doing or whatever. You got to be like, I got a boyfriend. It's been two no. years. Back up. You're not going to do that. <laughs> you like, oh, hey, cool. Like, you you know, I mean, I don't know you, know you. Yeah. I think, you know. Yeah, I'm not like. I'd have a resting bitch face a lot of times, but I'm not like super stand up. Get away from me. Don't talk to me. I will respectfully. Hello. Hi. How are you? But I won't give off vibes like I need you to continue to talk to me. Yeah. You might be like, you need this napkin because you're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the way he said it because the way he said it is like this. You're not you've been talking. So, you know that he's giving you those good vibes right. already. Right. You know? Okay. Let's say this. Let's say you're uh, you're at a hotel for the weekend, right? And you guys are in the same hotel. So you might go to breakfast and be like, oh, that's that guy that, you know, was being a little flirty with me when he stood behind me when I was, take, you know, handing in my luggage or, or checking in, right? And so you just happen to see him a couple times during that weekend. And, let's you know, he's like... In Vegas, right? Let's set the scene, Tony. All right, let's do it. So you're in Vegas, you know. I'm not going to say what stays in what you know happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So you're in Vegas, right? And you see the guy, you know, he's that, he, listen, listen. He's that guy, right? So, um, Ariel, how you doing? Oh, so, um, Destiny, what go on? You know, my mom and my dad is both from Jamaica. My dad actually never came to the United States. My mom got pregnant with me when I was in Jamaica and moved to New York and had me here. Just wow. saying, so I'm I'm a I'm a Jamaican, but you know. <laughs> anyway, so you go to you go to um you go to um Las Vegas, right? And you know, you're you're on this trip for whatever reason. You meet the guy, you know, and uh, you know, you see him often throughout the trip, you know. So you mean to tell me, and again, you might listen, I I'm not KG saying you captain, but you might be. <laughs> But, you know, over, let's say over three days, you see him every now and then. It's like, I keep running into this dude. But he's funny. He got funny jokes. You know, I mean, the guys say you got, your girls aren't funny. Yeah, a little funny. Sometimes I laugh. So <laughs> he bring out the funny side of you. You got him laughing. You're like, yeah, he's laughing at my jokes. I thought Josh said I wasn't funny. KG said I ain't funny. So now he's laughing at your jokes. And you're like, and the mood just seems cool. He's like, listen, um, Ariella, my grace, would you, um, <laughs> We would invite you. Would, you would ever My. hopelessly flirt with somebody, Ariella? Like, yeah, but to take it like deep. conversation is different than taking it further and sleeping with this person. I'm not going to avoid them. Wait, Nobody no one, hold on. I, I know my limits. You said fantasy. My fantasy dude, right? Like, yes. listen, yeah, no. Conversation's cool. If I pass you in the hallway, uh, in the lobby of the hotel, fine, no, no mm. problem. But I'm not sitting down having dinner with you. Right, we're not having candlelit nothing. Nope, we're not going for walks. We can talk as we pass each other. That's the extent of it for me. No, my That's cool. take it really Have you me. ever hopelessly flirt with somebody? You know, it's probably you ain't gonna sex that person, but you all just flirt like deep flirt. Yeah. So would that be considered cheating in that situation? <sighs> <laughs> oh. 
what if you, Tony what if you found out? Nah, I, I, you found I didn't want that, to hear. Yeah, what if you found out your dude was flirting the same way you right. were Right, that's what I'm thinking of in my mind. Like, how would well, I? That's I, with I morality. Thank you. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I wouldn't want someone to do that to me, I wouldn't do that. To He's not doing it to well, me. He's flirting with the girl. Yeah, and I think Lala got a good point. She said, we don't know until we're in a situation. Because we could always say, I'll never do this. Yeah. But you really don't know until you put in that situation. But if, you're, if your response is, as far as I know, I know I'm going to say no. But, you know. That's how I feel, right? Like, you painted the picture. Everything yeah. at home yeah. is going good. If things were rocky home, oh, yeah. Like, then I'm entertaining somebody else probably because of the... Right. You know, things are falling off over there and I'm not fulfilled and I'm out of town and I'm stressed. Right. So, yeah, getting attention from somebody else. Not saying that it's right, Josh. I see you making faces, but it's bound <laughs> to happen. That's cool. Listen, it's all good. I'm not going to badger you until you give me the answer I want. Of course, no, I mean, not that I want, but. Here's what are you saying, Mike? If, it, if it's somehow, some way, one in a million chance got back to your significant other. The question is, could you are you willing to risk that by losing the person that you're with? So right. I think that's where Ariella, Ariella's getting to. Like I can't yeah. she can right. risk it, the person that she really wants. I get her stance, mm. but I'm just going with what Mr. Tony said. Nobody yeah. said sex. Everybody said we're just and like, hey, the situation that like we we'll flirt. Like if I if we flirt and we flirt at the right. at the cashier, I'll flirt with you. Are you coming home with me? Yes, sir. Where you taking me? I'll flirt <laughs> all the way out. Flirt with you. It's fun. I, I, I guess that's my problem. You. I don't think I'm a big flirt, but I've been told that to I am. So yeah, I think you are. it's just innocent conversation, mm. and I might be flirting. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, you know, it's funny, Ariella. Just from watching the show, you um, I feel like we all got it in us to flirt, right? And I feel like your your normal casual vibe is um, you're friendly, right? I I won't say you're a flirter, but you're friendly. So I feel like I'm not gonna say you're intentionally flirting, but I feel like your friendliness and um, you know, may make you know, yes, you got that big smile. Listen, I've been watching for a while, so um, you know. You that might make a guy be like, oh, I wonder if she, you know. Now Destiny might, you know, she might do the hair thing a little bit, you know. So it'd be a little like, oh, I think she's checking me out. <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, you're friendly, and you know, you smile. Some guy might think like, I wonder. So I don't think you might be intentionally flirting, but I think you have a flirtatious vibe, friendly flirtatious vibe. You know, I'm not saying you, you know, you're gonna meet in person, and Big Mike gonna be like, yo. <laughs> Tony, I met this girl. She called herself Grace, and I was like, "Yeah, Grace," but not. Nah. Okay, I mean, yes. Right. Like I said, I I've think heard it I before, think Lala so. was asking some questions. We didn't answer her questions. All okay. right. Oh, so, which is. Threesomes. Let's talk. And Let's brought up the fact that males wouldn't do male, but men like for females to do females. So I see a uh, apples and oranges comparison coming. So why is it okay for men, for females to do such, but a man can't do it because he's gay, etc. But that's hypocritical aspect is all I'm saying. Why is that? So here's the thing. Uh, it's not hypocritical. It's if you did a survey, I'm about to pull a Josh right now. Statistically, <laughs> there's more. Listen, I'm a fan. Statistically, there's more women that would be bi, right? Then there's more guys. So you'll find, like, you, it's so many guys, like, all right, I'm going to pull up y'all recent show. I don't even want to hear me. Yo, if it get old, you know? So, y'all yeah, know what y'all talking about. So, we're talking about, uh, hold on, what, Mike, what was the term called again? The VAE student? No, I'm talking about being a student. Oh, yeah, if you yeah. Keep, oh, 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 it's about keeping the change. <laughs> so keep the change, right? So right, right. so you guys, we don't even want the change on us, right? But this <laughs> is more like, it's just, again, we talked about the anatomy. and blah, Oh, you guys did. I feel like I'm on the show because I, listen. But anyway, so it's more, it's not, it's not that we're being, um, you know, it's a double standards, but it's just statistically, 
it's more you'll be more likely to find a girl that be like, oh, I mess with girls. Then you'll find a guy to be like, oh, I mess with guys. That's all we're saying. Okay. You got what do you guys feel about that? I mean, in, I think in addition, in addition to what we kind of started when Tony came back on uh, came on the show, right? Is that essentially if you invite another dude, you're essentially becoming the beta cuck as well. Right. So that's like two right. negatives. So either you so right. you you're putting in a uh, a potential homosexual situation if you're not homosexual or a potential beta cuck situation. So right. n- neither of which are good if you're not into that. Right. Yeah, because think about it. You, like to have a fully because we're talking about threesome, right? To have a really good threesome, I feel like for me, it'd be like everybody's doing something at the same time, right? Unless you have that moment where you just like, oh, that. But I feel like if it's a guy and a guy and a girl and you don't mess with guys, it's going to be so like, I don't know, the vibe just going to be different. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. So, that was the la la, but yeah, I agree with that. I think, I, I don't know, but personally, I just mm. feel like men feel uncomfortable saying that they are in that situation because to what Tony just said, everybody has to be doing something or receiving something. And I think with two guys and a girl, everybody can be doing something in that situation. The men don't have to interact and they can still be getting pleased sexually. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of men feeling uncomfortable saying that they did it or putting themselves in that situation. Like you don't have to do anything with the guy, but I get it. Yeah, but we said a long time ago, if it's two guys and a girl and- Yes, it's, it's a, a train. train. Yeah, mm. right. And probably building a bridge as well. <laughs> that a, a train can go over. So yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so okay for my juices to touch hers, but you know, y'all are touching. I feel like oh, a right. question, Lala. To be honest. <laughs> Yeah, because I think she's getting caught up with why is it right for you or not for you. I think let's say if it was guys on the panel that's like, oh, I'm bi, then we you wouldn't have that problem. But the majority of guys are gonna be like, don't get it on me, you know, versus some girls are gonna be like, oh, I mean, listen, she's cute, I kiss her off, eh, things may happen. It's that's just huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a preference thing because then again, as we said the other day when we were talking about like a lot of things, a lot of things are also like for me personally, let's say me, I don't want to watch two men the way okay. they think. I no body man. Let's exactly. Just talk about destiny. It's cultural, it's a whole lot of things for me. So I mean it's preference thing, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of ladies will also agree with that in addition to even if a dude was okay with things like fingers or whatever going in his hole they would look at him differently even if it was that so i feel like there's a correlation between all of those things and again i'm not saying that people who are homosexual aren't masculine no, right. Right, if, right if you identify as, if you right. identify as hetero and you're doing those things then you're not going to be viewed as masculine anymore yeah i mean again it's a preference like I'm just saying the likelihood of you uh, being with someone that's a female that say, all right, cool, let's do it. So you here's here's my point. If my wife say, all right, come on, let's get a girl, right? And I'm like, all right, you down, bet, right? But then she can't look at me and be like, all right, let's get a guy. I'm like, hold up, I never said I wanted a guy. Like, wait, what? So that's not, she can't be like, I mean, that's messed up because I have one because that's your preference because you don't, you know what I'm saying? So that wouldn't be fair. So Lala's making it like, well, if I could do it, you should be able to do it. Like, not if I don't want to. Like, you might want to work at Wendy's. I don't. So, <laughs> man, don't put that on me. And our roles are different. Yeah. If you went to your girl and said, uh, let's get a guy in here, she will look at you crazy like the average woman. So that's like, mm-hmm. right. it just is what it is. Stuff like that. So. Absolutely. All right, guys, time for the last question. Who wants to go? I feel like that's me. Oh. I was about to say our guest should ask the last question. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, uh, Lala. Yeah, you're the guest. <laughs> I don't know. She might talk more than me. Uh, uh, let me... um. 
All right, so here's what's crazy. Let me ask a crazy question that Mike and I uh, asked on our show, and I just asked the same question on the Sandy and Anthony show. All right, so you ready? Shout out to Sandy Cheeks, absolutely. Yep, my wife Sandy, she is uh, laying down right now while I'm doing this thing. So listen, if, uh, all right, you ready? Follow me down this rabbit hole, all right? Let's just be honest, all right? Because I'm going to be honest, and you're going to be like, what? But I'm just being honest. And Mike already heard it. So Mike can be like, nah, but it is what it is. So if you had 24 hours to be the opposite sex, um, what would you want to accomplish or do before that 24 hours was over? Hmm. 24 hours. I would go to sleep until I wake up as a guy. <laughs> Josh, like, I don't want no part of this. Josh, you'll be the guy that'll end up turning into a girl to be on her period. You know, like, yo, what the this ain't right. Which is exactly why I would take a nap and wake up when I'm <laughs> home. <laughs> so, ladies? That's an interesting question. Um, I said for, I said I would try to get as much free stuff as I can, but no <laughs> at all. That's what I said. It was like, I'll be flowing my hair at the mm. gas station. I didn't say free food. I just live on the floor no hair. <laughs> well, you said I'm feminine wow, so yeah. <laughs> I guess there was this time I was watching Steve Harvey and he told a joke about how he could pee and move a, a can of coke. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I could do that. <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. I've never thought about being a guy. Yeah, well, I don't know if I would want to be a guy. Let me let me just jump in there, man. Let me just jump in there, all right? So I would probably none of y'all heard that song. If you were a boy, come on. Huh? None of y'all heard that song. If I were a boy, if I would let me let me jump in there, Josh. So uh, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me your answer, Tony. Let me take my glasses. Off. Let me take my uh, cap glasses off, man. So we don't have no cap. So um. Let me be honest. You, you ever hear the term like yo? I remember talking to a ladies back in the day, right? And it'd be like, yo, I wonder um, who sex feel better for, right? And then I had some girls say, oh, if you you ever put your finger in your ear, scratch your ear, what, what feels better, your finger or your ear? So they're like, obviously for girls. So if I was a girl, all transparency, you know, Josh, cover your ears, right? So if I was a girl. For 24 hours, I would want to get, I would want to have sex. I would want to see what it would feel like to have sex, like for the female. Like, I wonder, like, how, like, is it, do, like, is it more, like, how, does it feel better for a girl? I'm, I'll, I would be curious. So if I was a well, girl. I would agree I'd, with that. I would want to have sex as a man, right? I would want to know what it feels like with the penis. That, right. obvious, I think, maybe, maybe not. Cause I feel like then people are like, like Mike was like, yeah. But then when you be a girl, a guy, you'll be like, yo, I was with a dude, but you was a girl at the time. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Like I would do it just to know if I could stay. To me. Correct. Cause you wasn't a male at the time. What I said was, I don't want the memory of what happened when I was a girl. If I did that, so now nah, I'm good off that. Right. So I equate this to traveling. Right. One of my favorite things in the world is waking up in one city and going to sleep in another city. So okay. you're waking up as one person and then you're going to sleep as another. So you would still have those memories regardless. True. But I, I, obviously I want to know what it feels like. I'm so. imagining some of KG faces right now. <laughs> 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 I'm good. I, I ain't doing that. Crazy <laughs> about to head out. <laughs> okay, so Ariella said she would do it just to see what it's like. What about you, Destiny? Hey, Josh and night. Josh and Mike said no. I I know jo Mike said no. Josh didn't a hundred percent no. So I don't know if his answer was no or not. That whole I sleep and wake up somewhere else. I, I don't know if that means yes or no. So. The uh fuck no was conveyed. And I started, <laughs> no, 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 I started by saying I would take a nap until I woke up. That, that's how True. I yeah. But I just figured maybe you travel down that whole wake up as somebody, go to sleep as somebody. Maybe you was like, ah, you know what? Now I think about it. You want some D in my mouth? Um, no. No. Okay, I'm just checking. Just checking, man. But so Destiny. 
I don't. I honestly don't. Don't think. Of, I've never thought about that before. I don't know why okay. I never did. Want to be a guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I had a penis, I guess I would use it. Yeah, I mean, it, long but... term. But for for twenty four hours, I think I spend the first. 22 trying to figure out why the hell I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got all deep. I was like, yo, how am I going to find somebody to sleep with? How gonna? And my wife was like, what? you just going to go on the internet. I was like, oh, damn, you're right. <laughs> I'm just going to put on there DTF down to F. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we are going to say good evening and thank you for joining us. Thank you for all our people on the esteemed panel. Thank you for Tony Stark Jr. for making me. Thing as always, and thank you guys once again. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. See you guys. And then I made that connecting point where I was just like, "Hey, people are already eavesdrop. If you're out here having dope ass conversations while you're lit, it's like, why not? Why not put it into a podcast? He makes podcasts. He's here outside of the city. Pick his brain. I'ma just be here. But I just came to confess yeah. that I'm just feeling so blessed. blessed. Yeah. I'm just feeling so blessed. I'm just feeling so blessed. Wake up every day.